Come back online. Let's put everything put back into position. I mean, I'm looking at, the, at how many busts there were. It's po I mean, your odds aren't that bad. You might get a wasp tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you, Puzz. You can't hide your crimes. You're all normal? Uh-huh. You're all normal? Uh-huh. I trust word of chat, I suppose. I'm just trying to find it like jam, right? I I did no such thing. I leaned on a bit by accident. You know, you get up and you like accidentally sit on a remote control. Sometimes that happens with a wasp button. It's you true. Believe me, right? Uh, you can hear us, but no music. We'll get everything back up soon. Uh, we're we're working on it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, OBS is fun program. Got an info dump to redeem. Now's actually a pretty good time for it. Uh, specifically for me. No, no, thank you, Hollow Monster. Genuinely. There was no wasp. <laughs> I don't know if everyone just accidentally sat on the wasp button. But I suppose I have to accept it. <laughs> have we tried setting the wasp button to Wumbo? <laughs> I think it's worth trying. Frankie explains info incorrectly. Oh, good lord, we've got two... <laughs> There are two very separate energies in my activity feed suddenly. One of them is from Puzz, and it's Frankie Explains Info Incorrectly. Frankie, can you tell me about Carmen Sandiego? An innocent goof. An innocent goof. And then on the other hand, we have Frankie Explains Info Incorrectly from one male wife. That is talking about my favorite TV show, Dr. Phil. Chaos. Chaos and ruination. Alright, let's get the show on the road. I'm gonna start with puzzles because first comes first. This Frankie explains info incorrectly. I will be saying wrong things as a goof. And I'm going to say that they tell me about Carmen San Diego. Uh this is gonna be fun because I don't actually remember much about Carmen San Diego. But I believe that basically she had decided uh one day, when Carmen San Diego was very young, her actual dark backstory is that her parents were killed in national landmark. Thank you for the follow, Buzzard too. It was extremely tragic. It was one of the. It it was. I'm gonna say Mount Rushmore killed Carmen San Diego's parents. Uh, and yeah, it might sound a little bit rough. We're still working on it. Carmen San Diego's parents were killed by a national monument, of course, Mount. So, as revenge, she swore to begin removing them from America, uh, thereby destroying all large areas that are taught really fucked up things about it in school. So, she had to start going around and stealing them piece by piece. Her greatest escapade stealing the White House, and then I believe team middle schoolers had to chase her to get it back because, for some reason, uh, like unto a fairy spell, she can only be caught by someone pure of heart who got a really good grade in fifth grade geom er, geography. I know words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and of course she does have some kind of band of miscreants. I believe in the show they were like, you know, different nationalities to get that kind of fun bit across. It was the 90s still, but I'm going to say that actually her comrades in arms was a cappella group. Uh, obviously though the double agents the entire time. Alright, dear god. That was a little bit short, Puzz, but I have to try and get to male wives too, which is absolutely destroying my sense of concentration. And one sec while I see if I can at least fix how my voice sounds a little bit. I'm going to quit things in the background. Hi, uh, I'm just I'm just doodling, uh, trying to get the drawing hand warmed up. Um, I've been playing a lot of No More Heroes recently, so... I've been doodling Travis Touchdown. I don't know. It's a fun game. It's it's hyperviolent. It's goofy. I like it a lot. Um, thank you everyone for being extremely patient during this. Uh, the issue going on with Frankie's sound, I think, is entirely something on my end. Uh, something in my computer has gone terribly, horribly wrong. 
and I have been trying to fix it, but it is not going super great tonight. Which is a darn shame, because, you know, it's... I want to make a good impression with y'all, but... <clears throat> thank you for coming to the stream. Uh, tonight is commission night. Um, so, uh -oh. the issue is that uh, none of my sound or none of my music is playing to me. Um, so... <laughs> Very odd. I normally work with a lot of sound. <sighs> so, uh, what, what was that other message you got from Adrian, Frankie? Oh, they asked me to do a Frankie Explains Info Incorrectly about their favorite TV show, Dr. Phil. The American TV show, Dr. Phil, is actually an American Gladiator spinoff. Not really? many people know this. The actual point of Dr. Phil is to come in and defeat him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. First, you have to survive the labyrinth. Uh, of course, back to which Dr. Phil was better known by his uh, nickname, the Minotaur. Destroyer Men. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, his Dr. position never, like, had that much to do with the actual show. Like, I think it just kind of, like, helps... You can't just call the show, like, Phil Destroyer Men or, like, Phil... The guts eater. I think mm -hmm. like that. A little dream for the time. You know, the short when the story started, uh, when the show started, I should say. I feel like that was like an odd thing when I started seeing it pop up. You know, mm -hmm. lots of like, oh, Doctor Phil, he'll pay your life, and then someone judging into battle thing a trident. You uh, used to see those a lot. Now I haven't watched TV in a while. It's like that's still going on. I have to admit, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know what, you're right. It might be to differentiate him from Phil of the Future. So instead, you had Dr. Phil, that might be kind of like a band thing to say. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, I always thought the best weapon people tended to pay for him. Like, I like the hammer. The hammer is a good weapon. I think it does a lot of damage against him, especially when his weak spot begins to flash red during the second fist. But the problem is, is that if you swing it into a wall, you're just hitting wall. You're not hitting Dr. Phil. Uh, so I always think that really the pole arm is kind of a better option. Uh, I'm always a bit of a fan of, oh gosh, what's it called? I can never remember, but it's the one that's kind of an axe and a spear. Oh, the oh. hair I think was for showboating. The right? Thing? Like what? It, I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Because I think then it works out really well because you can <clears throat> get like. A chopping motion and keep him at distance. A halberd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halberds are good. I like those. <laughs> uh, in D&D, I often pick the halberd because you have people from like a block and a half away and it's very funny. No, stay back, stay back, stay back. Uh, but yeah, yeah, with Doctor, if you wanted to keep back, you wanted to keep out of grabbing, you wanted to keep from having his super move, like, you know, ever you have like the power here build it up and a studio audience always goes wild when he got to fire off his special attack. God. Like, Meta Knight ship? I can't why it's named that, though. I don't know that. Oh yeah, that's right, the Halberd. Yeah. I think Meta Knight is just kind of like that in some ways. Meta Knight does know what's cool. That's most of his job. But yeah, so I, I feel like I remember Dr. Phil, usually people enter it, like, in a group. Uh, that's why usually, like, someone and their mom, or like a pair of siblings who are having an argument because one of them is marrying the other one's his ex. And the idea is that it's a bonding experience that brings you together through the trial by combat. So like, you know, if... Uh, it was also used occasionally to, you know, like if there's a bunch of different dudes and for some reason none of them wants to take responsibility for a baby, just toss them on there and whoever survives, you know, they got that cash money award now to help the kid. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Phil is a raid boss. Yeah, exactly. You can go on one-on-one, -on -one, but that was mostly for special guests. Uh, I always liked it when Oprah showed up. I'm gonna say it, like, I know she's not perfect, but seeing Oprah come back in there with her morning star, dressed like a Valkyrie, I just always thought ruled. I was, you know, like a spectacle fight. Mm -hmm. you no, know, like, she's not really going to murder Dr. Phil because that'll kind of end the show, and that's not fun. No. Uh, my favorite loot drop from Dr. Phil? Uh, that's tough. Uh, I mean, if he is wet, that's cool and all, but I guess you want to come back and challenge him again? Like, that's 
just go in a wall, you know? I liked him when he dropped the all expenses paid trip to uh, somewhere inside the contiguous uh, lower 48. I the limit on the budget, you know? No, I kind of said. I'm pitching the very real Dr. Phil show that was always on when I was home after school. <laughs> so, you know, you'd always, you'd always at least get to see the fun of that. Uh, sadly, Alex Trebek's contestants on Jeopardy very rarely underwent rarely known fist-offs rule. Mm. Which I think, you know, kind of sad. I wish we could have gotten to see him fight more, like, hand-to-hand. -hand, but mostly everyone just went for these fucking trivia questions. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh... I think you're the and it's coming in for some guest hosting on Jeopardy, so I think it's cool. Oh, that's nice. Great. People were people have been saying that he should be the new host, and I think they're right. I'm just going to fetch with the desktop audio a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> you would like to find Jeopardy? Oh. God, I'm excited for when we get to the Gia and Colette sketch page. Yeah, honestly, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm I'm still waking up my yes. hand a little, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, wrestling audio made me a little mm -hmm. shaky, so. <laughs> totally understandable, yo. You're very sleepy because of the East Coast game. Yeah, we kind of run the late shift. Yeah, we do. Uh. If you have insomnia, we'll probably be streaming. At mm -hmm. least on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and sometimes another day, if we're playing Ball and Wonderworld, which we're doing still. So, you know, tune in for our experiences. What to draw with? Uh, draw a cool science lady. I'm not the person drawing. I shouldn't answer. Bugs, what should they draw? Oh, I, uh, cool science ladies are pretty cool. I have good ideas. Hey, thanks for the follow, Phaedros. You have to go to bed, so free to get to this pepper and you'll catch up on it on the VOD, but I'd really like cloud knowledge. Okay, okay. <clears throat> this will give bugs some time to warm up their hand. So, clown knowledge. I am that person who likes clowns, and I have always liked clowns since I was a little kid. I was that person. And I kind of apologize for anyone who wound up with chlorophobia. And good night, Josh, by the way. Good night, Josh. I should say. Clowns? <clears throat> Clowning and actually wound up kind of a bad rap in America specifically. And I do kind of blame Stephen King for this a little bit. I feel like he, he ruined it for everyone on accident. Oh, yeah? In general, I feel like... Yeah, like... So, it, to me, is really, like, the basis of a lot of people's clown phobia. I feel mm -hmm. like before, like, in the 70s, you didn't see everyone being terrified of goddamn clowns. No, I swear to God, get people more terrified of clowns than have ever actually seen clowns. Thank you for following friend Alexander. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Yeah, get sleep if you have to a bowl, okay? And I blame Stephen King for a lot. Uh, especially, I, I just have to be honest, I think sometimes when people try to imitate Stephen King's writing style, they kind of bring all the warts when I say it tragically. See also Lovecraft. Not as bad as Lovecraft, but who is, really? So, what clowns, uh, let's pick some, so, one thing I like about clowns is that a lot of people don't realize that more modern-day clowns, uh, oh, happy birthday, dude, and probable, modern-day clowns actually do work to try and be frightened kids. You would see a lot of, like, the old-fashioned white-face approaches going on anymore. You do sometimes, like, the classical look and everything, but clowns that actually work, kids typically now wear, like, you know the makeup that was used on a big comfy couch? That's kind of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about. The nose, a little bit of minimum makeup, and it's still very clearly like a person. You do a lot more of the exaggeration to the clothing. 
I feel like the kind of outfit that most people think of, like, the big fancy clown, that was a very specific, like, Ringling-style white face. But, I also think, sincerely, local Access TV kids shows are the actual aim for people becoming terrified of clowns. Because people who weren't actually trained as clowns would go like, Oh shit, we need a kids show for our local television program. Uh, shit. Carl, can you do something? Yeah, I'll be a clown. Kids like clowns, right? And so then not only do you get these clowns that are just like some dude, is this big comfy couch of deep cut? I feel like I've talked to a lot of people who know that show. Yeah, honestly. Admittedly, I didn't. Admittedly, I didn't get to watch it as a kid, but I kind of wish I had. I would have loved it. Oh yeah, like, especially for sure. like all the little. I anything with a puppet. I was pretty much good as a kid, honestly. Like any any puppet, any animations, the dust bunnies. I would have loved the hell out of. Uh, <laughs> Big comfy couch is genuinely to me one of the better modern examples of like clown-based media for kids, because a lot of what these old shows did that to me fuck people's perceptions of clowns is that it'd be someone who's not actually trained mm -hmm. and they kind of like people who aren't actually that enthused about performing for kids seep through some scary behavior like being kind of loud being kind of unpredictable maintaining a weird facade of no i'm not a real i know i've gotten in trouble for saying this before but it's good when kids can tell clown is an actual person <laughs> it just sounds menacing when I put it that way. It's all... Jojo Circus is an even deeper. I haven't heard of Jojo Circus. I don't think that's what... cool though. What's that one about? Uh, let us yeah, know in the chat. In the chat, tell us. But uh, yeah. America's anti-clown <laughs> propaganda striking again. You're not wrong. Because <laughs> the thing is, too, is I think like, okay, I all. I think like you have that you've got like the kind of scary local access clowns i was talking about big comfy couch a little bit i didn't <laughs> to watch it much but it was really cute it's the best clown because like oh, it is a clown but it's also like this is a little girl this character is a little girl you can very easily identify what her clown concept is and you've got like her nana and you got the delivery guy, mm -hmm. and you got like the cousin kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the most important part of clowning is that it's the form of entertainment where you're gonna get some silly goofs. You're gonna get some, someone's gonna do a pratfall, and it's gonna be a honk noise. And they're also three defined characters with a clearly defined relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, like, that's the base of clowning to me, which is also the basis of comedy. But not to get too galaxy brained, but also I get very galaxy brained about comedy in general. You need those, like, the set character archetypes and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like that, that traces, like, in clowning, usually the concept of, like, a clown who's a character who's, like, in charge of things or of some kind of higher status. And then you have another clown that's, like, maybe works for the first clown or is in some way obviously not in charge of things. That goes all the way down the goddamn line. Yeah, that's I can talk about it for a long time. Brahms hierarchy of clowns, right? Yes, yes, it's uh exactly, which traces back to Commedia dell'arte, which is proto clowning and also proto almost all types of European comedy, honestly. Oh, really? Which I stress European here because a lot of times people say like the base of all comedy, and I'm like there is. We cannot trace Italian mask codpiece comedy to all other goddamn fucking content. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Uh, for instance, Japan has very different like comedy like structures, which I think is very cool. They've got the um, Boke and Sukomi. Is mm -hmm. that it? That's right. The straight man and which, the. Uh, yes, yeah. I do mostly. Yeah. Which I do mostly have memorized thanks to the meme. Thank you. My brain will always have the words moe in comparison or something <laughs> like that. Uh, you know Commedia dell'arte was going to come up? Yeah, it comes up with me eventually. <laughs> Which is a weird thing. Uh, literally, okay, there was a uh, Brian David Gilbert. He was doing... Wasn't it like the Fire Emblem cast thing? And he's like, and I know what you're all thinking. Commedia dell'arte. And I was like, I have never been more seen in my, my life. Yes. Yes, finally. <laughs> you're right. It was me. <laughs> you were speaking to me. 
<laughs> Finally. <laughs> <sighs> Which, uh, one of these days, we gotta figure out how to do the, uh, if I ever get figure out how to, like, one producer on one of these shows someday, I'm just gonna do the slideshow of Commedia dell'arte and Lupin the Third. Welcome to the confluence of deeply obscure concepts. <laughs> Your mom's clown name was Ali Oop, because her name's Alicia. I oh, love that. Oh, that's cute. I no, like that. Clown, clown, clown names are a joy. Clown names are the best. I love people being unfetteredly silly, because I feel like silliness is one of those things that's like, it's one of the first things you learn to feel kind of embarrassed about. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to look silly. But clowns are just about that. It's literally about, like, be willing to throw yourself under the proverbial bus for the sake of a joke, which I'm always very passionate about because I, at some long years ago as a teen, I realized that playing the Bert, aka the straight man, except I call it playing the Bert instead because I'm not straight, is fun. <laughs> Setting up jokes is fun. It is. Leading goofs is fun. Uh, also works out well if, say, you're a little bit deadpan because you're pretty autistic, but you really like talking to people. Yep. Thank you for following Block Spiders. Thank you for the Thank following. You for following French Alexandra. I might have missed it when I was talking about clowns. Oh, Alicia. My my apologies. Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, man. No, clown ability. Clowns who do the balloon stuff, they got, like, lead. Fucking. Well, lead is a bad word. They got steel <laughs> lungs. Yeah, for oh. sure. It reminds me of that um, one quote of Fuck The that. Onion did about Patty LuPone about you should be able to take in a lungful of air to hawk a mouthful of peanut butter <laughs> across a stadium. If you ever see me choking on peanut butter in public, just leave me, because it means that Patty you knew and love is already dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that one sticks with me so much. I know. I think it's because I think, I think of it every time I see her sing and I'm like, yeah, I think this woman has an area of attack, like, fucking shout. <laughs> if she really wanted to. <laughs> Thank you, worthy kids, for your service to the clown community. Yes, honestly. Yeah, that's without, true. Without lying. Yeah, worthy kids bringing clowns back in a capacity where they're not scary makes me happy. Because I always feel like part of why clowns got turned into like, oh, the scary clown thing is it's like, whoa. What if a thing for- Bugs, listen, I have the most fucked up horror idea ever. I'm listening. It's, it's really fucked up. Uh-huh. What if a thing for kids? Uh-huh. But fucked up and scary. No! Like with knives and, no. and fangy teeth. Oh, that's it's too much. It's for children. Up. That's really fucked up. But it up. wants to kill you now. I don't like that. No, it's no, a no, clown. No, no, like, no. Like, no, you know, no, if no. we love this clowns, is too scary to hear about. Cute, funny, silly clown, but- No. Yeah, it's gonna eat you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh god. It's Why? Like, Why? No. There's, a, there's there is a lot of room, I think, for like horror concepts that talk about like children's media. Literally one of my favorite things in the world is uh Oh gosh, I always forget their dang Twitter username. But going home, there's this very, oh, very oh, cool clown... concept. Yeah. Fucking clown core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clown core. Uh I we I follow them on Twitter. They do have the most amazing project they're working on that draws on like Sesame Street kind mm -hmm. of motifs and like mm -hmm. 1970s puppet shows. And oh my god, it's gorgeous. And it's not about like, haha, puppet with a knife. But it's, it's very, very compelling horror. Yeah, seriously. Yes. It's extremely fucking good. Even to the point where like the ad copy that they design is sourced to look like, um, the material. Oh, with like yeah. the soft blurry edges. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I got it. I'll retweet some of their work later on after the show because I really adore it. Yeah, for real. Uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> By the way, Quasi Stella Chicken, I actually forgot about John Wayne Gacy for a hot second when I was talking about scary clowns too. Speaking of motherfuckers ruining it for everyone, yeah. I'm not getting into that subject because it's like awful and gross, but like, motherfucker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, guy who deserves to be forgotten. God, yeah. Which, okay, the funny thing is horror that was hitting the US soil when I was like the exact age to be getting into horror was The Ring. Which has had some legacies in horror. 
Uh -huh. Some good, some bad. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, clown core as an aesthetic and not the band clown core. Yeah, the <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> that song name fucking rules? What? <laughs> I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> no, no, that sounds like an awesome song. But yeah, I think we're t talking about a... It's tricky because uh, Clown Core is an aesthetic. Hang on, also I'm gonna float. find it. I probably misremembered. Hang on. It's possible. If I type Clown, it'll come up. Clown yeah, Cauldron. Yeah. Clown Cauldron. Okay. Follow them, by the way. They do amazing art, and they actually have their own... Uh, some of my favorite character designs. Yeah, seriously. It's fucking dope. Possibly. Sorry, I'm sorry. Ooh. Clown Core is probably... You know that one band, <laughs> Rock and Roll. Cl Clown Core is a band and an aesthetic and a clothing store, which I am coveting because... Oh my god, they got this hoodie. Oh, they got oh, this hoodie. Yeah. It's clown, it's pastel, and it's out of stock. Holly, can you link that in Bops and Jams too? I want to hear that after the stream. I don't want to lose it in chat. That sounds fucking dope. There we go. I'm going to work back the hair a little. Thank also, I'm you. typing out the person we were talking about in chat so that people can find them if they want to. Oh yeah, I checked the link in too. Oh good, good, good. Uh, side note, I really love the dolly on Big Comfy Couch. I oh, just yeah. think their design is really... It's, I have like this kind of love of when stuff is like the, pl like the platonic concept of a toy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dolls, dolls are real good. Yeah, it's, just, it's a dolly. What more do you need in life? <laughs> well, when you're six. Uh, when I was six and seven, so, I uh -huh. had a tiger doll that I named Hobbs after the comic book. Oh. Pretty much explicitly. Let's see. I what... took him everywhere. What was I running around with when I was six and seven? I spent a lot of time running around with uh, little bug cages and bug nets made out of uh, mm. onion bags. Um, I think I was carrying my Jessie the Cowgirl doll everywhere, actually. Oh god, yes. That yeah. that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Not <laughs> I'm saying this because I know about that doll already. I promise I'm not just going, ah yes, the lesbian toy story. <laughs> Get my also, ass. Get my ass. Except also, listen, I get to make that joke because there I was, like, age 12. Like, I'm definitely having a normal amount of emotion about this song. <laughs> that Jesse... I'm just gonna... <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Adrian says, where is that Jesse now? So, uh, John Lasseter signed that Jesse for my dad when I was a kid, so... Yeah. Now, now the Jesse's in my closet, and I have to do some thinking about what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. curse. Uh, so it's not a win somebody loved me situation. It's more of a Jesse has attained an evil curse from a warlock. Jesse has to. A... Shut, you sh <laughs> Shut up, you Adrian. The... <laughs> you know what the worst fucking thing is? Okay. There's a ride uh, at the Toy Story Land uh, in Disney World, and it's you, you get in a little fun spaceship, and you're like, yay, I'm in the spaceship, and it's attached to like one of the aliens, but he's got a rocket pack on mm -hmm. him, and you're like, yay, this mm -hmm. is so much fun, this is, this is exactly what the ride looks like. It's, it's kind of a spinning cup situation, but you go on like a figure eight and you like have near misses with everyone. It's so fun. So I get in the ride vehicle and I'm like, yay, here I am at Disney World having so much fun. I haven't been here in years and it's so great. And the ride vehicle starts up and it starts playing happy techno version of When Somebody Loved Me. And I'm just sitting there in my fucking car with my hands up, because I'm still having Why fun. <laughs> Why is there a happy I don't know. so many decisions? <laughs> if you look it up, the ride vehicle music, you can find. Oh, God. <laughs> this was me having yeah, fun in the ride. Like an alert noise, but for something very obscure. <laughs> I... <laughs> Adrian, I can't know because I can't listen to music right now. The music you're hearing could, in the background right now is one hour relaxing Animal Crossing night and night ambient sounds because I trust it. 
Oh, can I get a side stream of that? Yes. <laughs> Here, enjoy relaxing Animal Crossing night and night ambient sound one hour on loop. Listen, I'm into it. Okay. You can't hear any music? Are you kidding? Can you hear it now? <laughs> oh, no. Ugh. I hate OBS. Okay, listen. So I was fucking crying earlier when I was drawing like this. Yeah. I was like, fuck, I have to fix OBS. Everything's broken. Christ, Christ almighty. Everything's fucking broken. You can't hear any music? Uh, okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, can you hear this? Is this anything? No. It's silent stream! Hooray! Gimmick of stream is silence! Anyway, so I'm <laughs> sobbing my fucking eyes out, trying to draw this very silently sobbing. I'm like, fuck, oh. everything's <laughs> broken! <laughs> oh god, you can hear it now? You can hear it okay. now? Okay. 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 I hate it, OBS. It, we can hear it. We can hear it. Fucking sub meow, ma sub meow machine gun. Your fellow fixed it. Thank you. You broke the fucking curse. Can you hear it louder now? Oh, the music is very quiet. Okay. Okay. Oh uh, God. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so if you're wondering why I was like all quiet and like shakily drawing this, because I was like, fuck. God damn it. So, that's everything's also fine why I now. Myself, that's also <laughs> why I allowed myself to go on a tear about clowns. This is why we're a buddy system. Yeah, exactly. I literally- I sent Frankie, like, I'm sobbing my fucking eyes out. Can you talk? <laughs> yeah. Which the thing is, I know bugs well enough to know, like, no, the solution isn't to stop the stream. It's like a stress response. Yeah, exactly. Ah, <sighs> but now everything's so normal. And I'm very good. Um, I don't have any music, but that's okay. I can work without music. I've worked without music before. Um, so we're finishing warm-ups uh -huh. now. Uh, I drew Gina yeah, and yeah. Colette. I don't know why. They've been my autopilot doodle for a while. Um, uh, because women. Also, thank you for the bits, Leon the Cowboy. Oh, Leon, thank you. I'd like to give you shapes if that's cool. Thank you, Leon. It's very kind of you. I don't know if that we alert went like off audibly too. at all. I'm sorry. It went off visibly. It went off visibly. All right, that's fine then. That's fine. Uh, yeah. We'll Oop. take it. We'll take it. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Skeleton, for the funny shapes. Thank you. Yes, this is warm ups. Yeah, this is warm -ups. me warming up. Um, actually, uh, let me open up the commission proper. Um, so yeah. our commission is for, I believe. Let me consult my list. This is for Killer Lesbian. Hi, Wizorb. Hi, Wizorb. And what this is, is we have three characters from Half-Life. Uh, canon Half-Life. Oh, boy. Uh, Leon the Cowboy, that's the best emote. What the fuck? That's the best emote. That's very cute. That's a Tomagotchi dude. Yeah, it's a Tomagotchi dude. It's a cowboy. So, uh, Killer oh, Lesbian. Oh, shucks. Not buying your Vegeta. Thank you. Oh, Vegeta. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Killer Lesbian asked for Eli Kleiner and Russell from Half-Life, the, the canon Half-Life, yes. uh, as a couple. Well, thruple. So, I've been doodling that. And now we will continue doing this. Yeah! Hooray! Which, we always appreciate these because every now and then we just sell people on a ship and then we get commissioned for it. Yeah, honestly. Oh, the Puzz! Best economy. Oh, Puzz, thank you. Holy crap, 25 bucks, thank you. Oh, Buzz, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's kind of you. Hell program OBS, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so, um, in Half-Life Alex, which I've played and I really fucking love with all my heart, I, I could go on and on about that yes. game. Um, uh, we have a complete run-through of Half-Life Alex, and we've gotten most of the way through Half-Life Alex with director's commentary. That's how much we love these goddamn characters. Oh, Killer Lesbian, thank you for giving out a sub. Yeah, for real, thank you! Uh, Russell is a character from Half-Life Alex specifically, which is a good game. It's only in VR, but also it's like a VR game, so... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see, I have to look it's up good. something. It's great. Dog Easter Egg, Half-Life mm -hmm. Alex. 
So in Half-Life Alex, if you reach up on a shelf at like the beginning of the game, there's a Polaroid of a prototype dog, which is what I'm drawing here. If you yeah. played Half-Life 2, you probably remember oh, Hog. Hog? Dog is the big hulking gorilla puppy robot. Yeah. So you can find uh, a very cute proto version of it, and I'm pulling up real quick. That is a reference. There it is. Uh, okay. Which Half-Life 2 is also a game that has a lot of great things going for it and characters that I love. Also, we will play it eventually, okay? <laughs> <laughs> dog! I love dog. I love dog so much, too. It's, I, I especially love it. I feel like it's so in tune with, like, no, that's a dog. When you look at any big animal that you'd like to hug. Mm-hmm. 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 I have to bring in this image real quick. I'm using it as reference. Let's see. Do 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 do. There it is. This is the Easter egg image. I have to lighten it real quick. What so I can see it. Okay. Yes. Look at him. That's a puppy. Uh, which something we. Which also something we realized about dogs' design in general is that the kind of flexible fan part on the front there is the same thing that's used on a bunch of the combine drones including the same types that russell repurposes into his own drones uh which he wind up like he tragically doesn't get to use for very long no. but it's really cool and it really brings up the idea that like the rebels are working from these scrapped parts and russell and alex both kind of work with the same materials mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bubby and there's, puppy. there's some Potato. really cool design you could notice in the game um, in Half-Life Alex if you're looking around Russell's lab, where like at one point early mm -hmm. on in the game he shows you like, okay, this is a holographic map of where your dad is. And um, if you look up, actually... Oh! Well, thank you, Squeebus. That's very sweet of you. Um, yeah. if, if you look up while that presentation is going on, you can see that actually Russell has hoisted a combine like full-on machine into his fucking ceiling so he can use it as a projector. <laughs> it's like if you put, like, a Coca-Cola machine in your ceiling to use it to make, like, like confetti come out of the coin slot. Oh, hi, Goof Cat. Oh, Frankie? Hello? Hi! What'd you say? Am I still here? Yes, you cut out for Oh, a I was gonna say, Russell, how did you get it there? <laughs> what did you do? Well, Russ? It's, it's not talked like, about, but Russ has super strength. Clearly. Clearly. I think he has a chain and a pulley. This is the secret and lore. Too much time on his hands. Russell is, Russell is the mean, secret mean, weapon of the rebellion. I mean, to be honest, we only see him under, like, literally a shirt under a shirt mm -hmm. with a giant combine like out like cleanup suit on over it so for all we know he is ripped under there yes he has giant muscles and he looks like this wait he doesn't have a mustache he, does. Again. he has he has sideburns he has ham hocks ham what is it ham bones I love his hair. I Ham bones? You know, when you have the big, um, the big terrible sideburns, everyone that's really into ska has. Oh, mutton chops. Mutton chops. Thank you. Oh, oh, you like these ladies above? <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Oh, oh shit. Now, please show the people. Show the people. <laughs> now, now, back to the real stuff. Hang on, hang on. This is why y'all gotta show up for our art stream. <laughs> <laughs> we are simply saying Bayonetta sh could fight vampires, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a real... Gabe Newell <laughs> took me aside and he said, Listen, uh -huh. here's concept art of what Russell looks like underneath his shirt. Here... Here, you can have this. I trust you with this. You're my best friend. Thank you for saving my life once. And so, um... It's true. Uh, 
folks found Gabe Newell trapped underneath a cardboard box which had a brick on top of it. He's so small in real life, he wouldn't even believe it. Yeah. And tenderly he took the box off. There was a there was a cool knife inside. He got tricked. It was very sad. <laughs> That's true. Someone put a really cool knife underneath a box, propped up with a stick. I think it was one of the dudes who made Duke Nukem Forever, actually. I think they were trying to trap him. It's really fucked up. That's so sad. <laughs> Pizza and knife collection under a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russell did find the world's only amazing bow flex. He was trapped inside downloading the internet for like six fucking months. Yeah. 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 Yeah, see, Alex? I was so bored while the internet was downloading that I just spent the whole time getting fucking ripped. <laughs> Russell's gonna show up in Half Life 3 with the fucking tank theme from Left 4 Dead playing as he bursts through a wall. God! <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you gotta eat the eggshells, too. <laughs> Alex, it's where all the protein is, Alex. You're not gonna have the gains without the shells, Alex. He's so really strong the only, and cool. The, the best Russell impression I do is just how he says Alex, so I just kind of milk that. I know, it's very good. It gets slightly confrontational if I do it too long. <laughs> this is canon art of Russell, uh, last name Laszlo, so... Please enjoy. It's true, yeah. This They haven't put out the Alex art book mm -hmm. yet. Uh, when they do, we'll finally get to see the, the glossiest JPEG of Big Buff Russell. It's true. Uh, that still this is on. Also, however, it will also reveal that the man is spare bald. Very uh, sad. Technically, that's canon right now, actually. Rip Russell. Rip Russell. Yeah, the the model is bald under the hat, so he's. I I have argued before. Hey, maybe it is just because he has the hat on in the scene, but no, he's probably meant to be bald, and that's fine. Being bald's good. I'm glad he's keeping warm. Let's... Alex, they warned me when I started getting on testosterone. You know, if anybody in your family has male pattern balding, and I looked them dead in the eye and said, "No, it should be fine." My father and my grandpa only really started to go bald once they got stressful jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on me, Alex. <laughs> Five days after the combine touchdown, Alex, it was the seven-hour war with my hairline. God. Uh... It all just went out at once. Poof. <laughs> let's see, let's see. What, do you, do you like my rich storytelling chat? <laughs> Valve, hire this man. I mean, do, kind of, sort of. <laughs> the man is shedding. He, yeah, it's too warm out. Oh, toddlers have fucked up hands. I have to think about this. Toddlers proportions are weird. I don't like Oh, yeah. It's it's so much head and so little body. It's like one one it's... third of the body is head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And good plasma. We talk don't worry about it. Half life is we talk as much through the lore as it. it's all canon. Everything we say is canon, yeah. so you don't need any secondary sources. It's true, it's true, it's true. Trust us, okay? Also, I'm gonna mute you, Squeebus, because that's a screwed up thing to say about a toddler. Don't, don't joke about that with toddlers, yeah. okay? I got a niece, yo. We're not really a haha, -ha, kids suck chat. Yeah. They're babies! Be nice to babies! Oh shit, from Vegeta. Oh, that's what I mean. Frankie, Frankie, oh, Frankie, info dump, spare it, Eli thoughts, please, 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 I've been so sweet and kind. Okay, 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 here's the thing about Eli. <clears throat> I am convinced this man met his wife through a battle bots competition. <laughs> you cannot look me in the eye, and they were on enemy team. You need to know. They probably almost threw fucking hands over a pair of tiny robots. Oh, one of those official G4 ones, even. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it was totally one of those situations where they had, like, opposing bullshit builds. Uh-huh. Where, like, uh, Az's, uh, that is, like, Alex's mom, definitely had, like, 
a stick that it was that it used to like flip other robots over with. Oh, God. And his was made to be like really difficult to flip, but it had a big hammer on it. God. God. So the yeah. match. Here's the thing. They probably had so much shit talk. I believe in my heart. Eli is one of those those goofy engineer type dudes who's like, no, no, it's cool. I didn't get any sleep, but this robot's gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> He has drunk a cup full of five-hour energy drink. He's that guy. But, like, the actual fight wound up being, like, 30 foot, like, the entire battle time limit of just them chasing each other in circles. <laughs> just, just, just kind of in circles while they yelled at each other. Uh, I think Eli was unflippable with a hammer on top, and I think that... As had the flipper, but she had like an advanced thing going where it had a flipper on every side. Oh, that was like unusually oh, long. Fliptron. Yes, 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 yes. Fliptron, Fliptron. Fliptron. And because I think it's funniest if it ends the way that the best battle bot competitions inevitably do, where the problem's been too solved, so it starts to come down to whose battery runs out first. <laughs> and that's definitely how the match ended. It all came down to, like, who had the lighter build. Beast of Flips. Yes. He's combined NyQuil and 5-hour... No, no, he's responsible. It was DayQuil and 5-hour energy. God. Gotta get the DayQuil people. It's the orange one. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of all the time, all the time. Folded up flipper uh, under side the note, bottom. I actually like to think that if Russell... Hey, thank you for following Sweebos. Uh, I do like to think that if Russell and as, like knew each other mm -hmm. well no if russell knew eli before everything happened i like to think that they knew each other through as because i for god's sakes will someone please give this woman who was relegated to a single picture a backstory <laughs> i am asking nicely for a cup of backstory i will build one myself thank you uh eli i always kind of wish that we got to see a little bit of eli when he was younger because like in half-life one he's 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 probably, like, I think me and Bugs have literally gone through the game and going like, okay, maybe this one's Eli. No, no, the wiki says this guy might be Eli. It's kind of just how Half-Life do. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very funny. <laughs> it really is a hell of a glow up for character writing. Uh, <laughs> Eli, Aslan, meet cute fist fight in the parking lot of the Battle Boss Fighter. Oh my god. <laughs> No one's entirely sure what happened, but after that, they, like, wound up in a Denny's, you know? <laughs> That's cute. It wasn't exactly romantic, but it all worked out. It was, it was his kind of- it was their kind of romance. Uh-huh, uh -huh. But, like, I always get the idea that, like, when he was young, I kind of- I feel like he was kind of a rambunctious dude, you know? Like, he got the kid, and he's definitely, like, devoted to his kid, but it was also probably, like, he- I always feel like he was supposed to be in, like, his 30s during Black Mesa, right? Like, back then? He's mm. not supposed to be that old. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Waffle House? God. No, you're right. They wound up in a Waffle House. So, Eli, I feel like, was probably a little bit rambunctious. Uh, I feel like his work that we actually get to see in the game that we know is his work is mostly, like... The gravity gun, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like because of how, like, Alex's interests went, like, maybe he wasn't a roboticist, but he, like, knows a lot about it. Uh, I do kind of like the idea that Russell worked with Alex a lot when she was a kid. I like that, too. Right? I feel like, I feel like Russell is that person who didn't know he'd get along well with a kid, but he does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, oh, no, I've, I've never really spent a lot of time around children, you know? And then he's like, well, hold on, this is just a funny little human who's got infinite stories about when they found a bug to tell me. This is easy. <laughs> Put a sandwich in her sometimes. Let's see. Meanwhile, cut to like, oh, okay, and the kid gets night terrors. Anyways. Eli would listen to his wife info dump about her science interests. Absolutely accurate for fucking hours. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, for sure. No, he's... I... I like to think that she was a roboticist and worked with, like... Hmm... 
it's so unclear what she was doing in Black Mesa. But I think it'd be cool if, like, maybe she had something to do with, like, the big mover robots. Mm -hmm. Like, not to be too, oh, Alex must be doing the same thing that her mom was doing, but it's something, goddammit. Also, big robots are cool. Big robots are cool. Uh, I just realized I didn't announce the stream. <laughs> God damn it's been it! It's a bit of one. We've had a whole one. We've had one and a half. One and a half, one and three quarters, thereabouts, thereabouts. Somewhere around there. Uh, so on Eli. <laughs> it has been a Thursday, I hasn't think it? Eli was. God. It has been a Thursday. God, Thursday, as I like to call it, Thursday. Uh. <laughs> No, the secret teams are when we do Balan and Wonder World because we literally decide at some point during the day we're like, do we want to do Balan today? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we do. We decide and... probably like an hour before showtime. I mean, the other day we decided randomly in the middle of the afternoon, so we had a, a luxurious amount of time to prepare ourselves, but. Mm. Out of touch Thursday? God, yeah. That's, OBS is having an out of touch Thursday. Fuck. That's the problem. Fuck. God damn it, OBS. You're God out of time. OBS. Quit watching that anime girl gif, OBS. I need you to pull yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad when people watch the VODs for that. Uh, horrifyingly, for those who haven't watched us playing Battle and Wonderworld, we, have, we found maybe the worst thing possible. Which is a genuinely dope level. Oh it's, yeah! It's just good. With a big it's woman. It's just great. With we a big just lady. found a level that's beautifully designed, wonderfully themed, fun to get through, an inventive level concept, not hard to navigate. It's good. Now we're cursed. Car. With giant woman, yes, actually. It's the best possible level. It's a large lady. <laughs> Sorry. I, I live on a busy road. <laughs> <laughs> you should Bugs have heard. lives in Southern California. Yeah, you should have heard the other day <laughs> that we had a, a big car crash outside. Oh God! No one was hurt, but I was just laying like half awake, and there was like, boom, and I was like, oh, ah! I'm just gonna stay in bed. Yeah. yeah. I think it's you just fine. Have to be like, well, well, you just sit there and you're like, over. do I hear screaming? No. Oh, cause. This has been... Thank you, Cos. Shoot, hang on. Let me see what that said. Streamlabs didn't read it for me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, also on Eli, I feel like he was definitely the person who made lunch like for Az and him and the kiddo. This he, is... He's not exactly like a fancy cook, but by God, he would get together to like make some decent like steak sandwiches for the day a little peanut butter if the crust cut off Cause also, says, thank you for the host mail life oh thank you and thank you Goofcat, for the host this has been such a yeah. night for you here have a tenor i'll jiggle and shake obs for you until it's nice for you keep making cute art the stream has still been fun thank you cause that's very sweet oh, of you thank you cause yeah which it's very funny because then Ob <laughs> then it ate your message See, this is my my big scam. I I break OBS and cry on stream, and then I get thirty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all sincerely, though. Thank you. Oh shucks. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So Eli, what else about Eli? Um, hmm. I feel like. I'm going to draw an interest out of my hat for Eli, and today I've decided that for reasons no one is clear on, he's actually oddly familiar with Super Sentai shows. I like, like he that. He was getting like, I like that the translated him. VHS tapes. Oh my god! Like, Listen, the Power Rangers are fun and all, but they use the footage from different. They could, they could have just imported the sh shows. Yo, he's. Do you, he do you likes bird watching. I could see that. Do you remember yep. uh, Christian Jacobs had those big vinyl kaiju toys that were all the bright colors? Oh my god, yeah. Eli yeah, collects yeah. those. God. Kaiju fan Eli, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Every now and then when he when the like everyone's busy trying to design weapons <laughs> to fight like unusually sized combine stuff, he's always just like <sighs> I think I made a fucked up birthday wish when I was eight, y'all. <laughs> yeah. 
You're good, Sweebus. Don't call attention to it if you have to be muted for something. You're but... good. We're gonna continue now. Eli's the kind of guy who'd be a guest scientist at my middle school who kickstart my science obsession that lasted for a hot minute. Yes. Almost certainly yes. You'll get Squeebus, don't worry. But yeah. yeah. Eli's, Eli has blueprints to build a real functional Gundam, but then he's always like, yeah, I can't justify actually making it. Being inside of a bipedal robot has a lot of problems. <laughs> Cut to him and Russell trying to figure out, like, okay, okay, but if it has six legs... <laughs> they, they're they just kind of like... They have thoughts. They have a thought. <laughs> and the thought is largely, like... Can we ride a strider? Can we make a strider yeah, our friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can you put a saddle on a strider, though? Here they are. Riding it like a horsey. Oh god, Black Mesa nerf fights. I think the weirdest part about that is that there's not actually that many Black Mesa employees that appear to be under, like, 50? So it's definitely, like, the 10 people who are, like, under- who are, like, 40 and under do it's, the nerf fight. It's, and it's Barney versus oh. Gordon, and then it's just, like, an arena of scientists silently watching them. No, no, have fun. Oh, to... Go ahead. Go on, go get him, Calhoun. Oh, God. Otis is there. <laughs> yeah, up till the day they try to do it through Magnuson's fucking office, and he takes out one of those like giant pump action motherfuckers. Oh God! Like where you literally pump it. <laughs> Just kashuk shook. <laughs> Run! <laughs> God. Gladiator match, Gordon looks over at Breen, and Breen just gives him the thumbs down, and he have to, has to, like, shoot in Barney's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> oh, we can't give Breen an opportunity to dress like Cesar. He take it. <laughs> God. He has a laurel crown. And his desk somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he's so pissed that even after becoming Grand Dictator of the World, he never gets a chance to use it. It's very sad. He wore it one time and the Combine advisors laughed at him. <laughs> he was he was like, no, no, this is a very famous Earth thing. This is normal. They're laughing oh, see, at him. This shows that I am the Emperor. I am unto Julius. And they're like, we do not care about your little mud planet's fucking history, dork. <laughs> No, wearing a little gold leaf crown is fun, but he, he's got one that's like that it looks like marble statues. Because he's got all the Roman antiquity stuff looks better without the colors. Oh god, yeah. Sure. sure, perhaps scientifically they've shown trace pigments, but it's about the classical look of the stark white. I just think it looks better, that's all. Yeah, Automod barks sometimes when people get called dumb, which is kind of cute. But also it's about Breen, and he's dumb, so... That's... that's a lot about Breen as a villain. He's not respected by nobody. They're thinking so much. They're thinking so hard. They just... why can't we hold hands and ride a strider, surely? Why not? Come on! What's Should your problem? Caesar from Half-Life Half New Vegas? I feel like Breen secretly wishes he was a New Vegas, like, bad guy instead of a Half-Life bad guy. <laughs> I think that's his natural environment. Yeah, he would uh, do good on the strip. His shitty uh, post-apocalyptic New Vegas gang would be themed about around being corporate normies. Oh god, they no, would take no over the office park! no understands any of the phraseology anymore. Oh god! They're all just like... I got a memo for you from the boss. They take out a gun that's got memo written on it. Oh. oh. <laughs> Your strikes oh, against no them are called like work citations. I'm sorry, you've got a citation God, against yeah. the administrator. Yeah. You can tell the really high, high rank ones because they actually have like. Or like a polo shirt. God. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is very like yuppie folk. I know that the game had all culture stop and who cares. <laughs> he, he rides a throne of office chairs. 
god. That's that's very scary. See, I having a PhD in to have a science degree, and he just. Uh, could you repeat that? Hell yeah. Oh, sorry. Am I up now? Yeah, you're up now. Uh, yeah. I do like Breed having a game and resources, but I think him having one in, like, actual science, he just never really did anything that got him attention. Mm-hmm. 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 I always think that's funny. Good night, Beetle Bunny. Especially... Or Beetle Bambi. Good night. Yeah. I well, the idea that Russell would not have a game. I have potential to get. Hello? Hey, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out if that's my headphones or. I, I think in this case it's my connection. Okay. I, I heard Just a. Have every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi! Hello! We'll just wait a little bit. Yeah, we're just having every problem in one night to speed from them, you see? Now we don't have any problems the whole rest of the year. Yeah, that's true. That's how it works. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Does Eli have a doctorate, like, officially? I always kind of forget. Uh, like, he might. Right? Yeah, I think, in fact, I don't know if this is canon. I think it's that he has a doctorate in robotics. It's either him or Azzy. Let me double check. The Combine Over Wiki is really good about this. Finally, to the people who maintain all the Half-Life wikis, you're fucking champions. Yeah, honestly. Let's see. Ba 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 physicist, ba ba I've, ba. I've been through so many wikis in my time on the internet. Presumably from Harvard, duh. Ba 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 does not fucking say. I swear what do you to mean, God. presumably from Harvard? There's other schools. No, he wears a Harvard shirt. Oh, that's right. Maybe <laughs> it's his wife's. Oh, that's true. <laughs> right. Let's see. Is it Asian who has a How cannon funny. robotics thing? That's killing me. I don't know. Am I dreaming that? Let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yada 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 yada. She has a necklace and that's it. Okay. Great. Good. Good. Thanks, Canon Half-Life. <laughs> she has a necklace. Well established. Oh. Eli, trophy husband to Dr. Vance. Man, I think that would have been his dream life. Just take care of the kid, do some science at home. Let's see. I do like to think that he is, like, if Kleiner is physics, then Eli would be robotics, and then Russell is like, you know, maybe also robotics, also like they were in the same field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like- Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I think we were talking once <clears throat> about like him and, uh, uh, <clears throat> him and Az like sharing classes and gravitating a little bit as like, hey, we are both not in the majority here. Let's sit together. I wonder- as if Eli and yep. Azian both worked in robotics at Black Mesa. That'd be cute! I mean, yeah. we probably know they met at Black Mesa. That'd be cute. Especially because- Russell doing soft robotics would be really cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah! That would be neat, Sarah Murphy! I always forget, what's the distinction? I don't fucking know. I just think it sounds neat. <laughs> it does sound good. I mean, here's the thing about Russell in game. He does a lot of different stuff, which I kind of like. Sarah Murphy is. I always get like. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, go ahead. Uh, Sarah Murphy is our our resident smart science person, so I I always just kind of like, okay, go ahead. You're the <laughs> smart one. What's going on here? Soft robotics are made from pliable materials similar to living organisms. I've seen some of those. Oh really? It's the uh, the flex rather than the the flex kind of joint and stuff are so really cool. Oh, that's neat. So like the stuff you see with the uh, animatronics, that's dope. 
Yeah. I could see that. I Part of what I've always thought about Russell is that I came up with the idea that, like, he didn't get a doctorate. Instead, he kind of just went, like, directly to work with Aperture and then spent a lot of time trying to get out of Aperture. Mm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I For anyone who hasn't heard this before, the idea is that he got hired after Caroline took over, which is kind of like the era of Portal that we see the remnants of in Portal 1. The, uh, the clean white walls and the turrets getting sold kind of era. Mm -hmm. Instead. Which I believe is what happened. Also because I like the idea of Russell having worked on GLaDOS, but not in like, uh, I helped design GLaDOS way. Instead he's like, yeah, I was in there doing a lot of maintenance. Uh, did you know it's possible for a robot to get so angry about what you're doing to it that it tries to bring the ceiling down? <laughs> also, I've just kind of built up this idea of like Russell interacting with GLaDOS so much when he was younger that he's totally immune to her shit. Oh god. <laughs> Just, uh, Dr. Laszlos. Thank you for the thank follow. Thank you for the follow. And thank you for the follow, real, oh, real David. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, right. You're not actually a doctor, are you? Good to see you too, GLaDOS. No, turns out they shut down Harvard after the aliens invaded. <laughs> so? <laughs> yes, uh, Wheatley was built after he left, and he is going to be pissed if he ever finds out. God. <laughs> you want to kill me so bad it makes you look stupid. Let's see. Eli has a widow's peak. This is a slight down angle. Therefore, if I'm doing this, the widow's peak mm -hmm. should be about here. Hooray, art! That's the fun part of hairlines. It's yeah. the part where you have to do like quick back of napkin math yeah. to figure out where they should be. Let's Oh yeah, I'm still a big fan of Android Gordon stuff. Oh yeah, me too. I think that one's fun. Yeah. Because robots are good. Kleiner's hairline, listen, it's been tough. He's been through so much. Kleiner was on that 1970s testosterone. <laughs> there we go. Lamar ate it. <laughs> Lamar That's ate Barney it. Kept tell Barney kept telling Alex that. Oh no, God. He got. It. It's one of the few times that Kleiner's ever been like genuinely mad at Barney. <laughs> nah, see, you, ha you can't ever let it on your head, okay? That's how Kleiner lost his hair. So, <laughs> like, well. I had to tell the six-year-old something to keep her from trying to wear the damn creature as a hat. <laughs> Explaining about the skull crunching capability still being an option ain't exactly fun to do to a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have hair in Half-Life 1 is the problem. Mm -hmm. His model has never had hair. <laughs> At some point after his super hunky scientist, uh... Oh, it's we yeah, we do talk about Sam and Max. Uh, Sam and Max is actually pretty e easy to sum up. It's about Max, a small violent legomorph, and Sam, a very large dog, and they're quote-unquote freelance police, which means that they're not police, which is good, because fuck cops. Sam and Max actually say fuck cops, too, which is surprising. Uh, and they have... Adventures that are unrooted from causality sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just goofy, fun, doofy gun adventure cartoons, basically. But they're mm -hmm. very good, is the thing. And they're very gay, is the uh, thing. They're pretty gay, is the thing. And the, their creator literally had them in a bride and groom outfit as his wedding toppers. Think so, about it, won't you? Think, think about it, won't you? Uh... And they're basically known for being in some extremely gorgeously inked comics by the original creator, a slightly scarring cartoon from the 90s that was created for inexplicable reasons, mm -hmm. a LucasArts point-and-click adventure game, and then Telltale point-and-click adventure games from when Telltale was still good. 
that have now been remade in HD by the original devs who fled Telltale, good for them, mm -hmm. who are getting to re-release them all. They're very good. Play those. Also, we played through the first season on our channel, so you could find that in the VODs if you wanted to. But also, they're good. They only occasionally have piss jokes. Only occasionally. Only occasionally. Don't worry about it. God. Uh, they're also very good because their villains are stuff like Euro Trash Raver Vampire or Evil Talk Show Host. Yeah. You do have to see the soda poppers. It's fine. The soda popper they're good enough that the soda poppers are good, okay? It's good. It's fine. It's good. It's good. It's fine. It's, we killed them. We killed them. They're never coming back. Mm. They're definitely not coming back in season two. Mm. Evil talk show host, aka talk show host. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think my actual favorite in season one is definitely the Teddy Bear Mafia. Because oh, the joke yeah. is just, what if Chuck E. Cheese, but the Mafia front, and played in the most transparent way possible? I There's a song involved that cracks me up every time. It's just, no mafia here, no mafia, no. <laughs> We're mafia free. Oh, God. I love that song. Just doing business legitimately. Dude, did you see that uh, with the case file they're re-releasing, they have the magnet that you put on the side of the head of the one? God, fucking, I'm, I'm, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm very tempted. Can I just sing the teddy bear song now because it's stuck in my head? Yes. Okay, good. I'm looking up. Okay. <clears throat> N-O-M- N O M A F I A, hey ho, baby. Welcome, welcome, generous friends. Days and weeks and tokens to spend. We're just regular businessmen. Just you and me and Teddy Bear. Teddy Bears is oodles of fun. Slots and sandwiches and pokers and guns. And look, no mobsters, nary a one. With you and me and Teddy Bear. Not mafia, no. No mafia, mugs. We're mafia free. No shady leaves upon the family tree. J. Edgar Hoover always insists organized crime just doesn't exist. QED, they're not in our midst. Say Edgar, me and Teddy Bear. No goons, no droppers, no grifters, no thugs. No dips, no clippers, no chippies, no lugs. No button men, packing gats loaded with slugs. It's you and me and Teddy Bear. And then it just kind of loops to the chorus, but I fucking love it every time. <laughs> Good night, Gordon Footwork. Good night, Gordon Footwork. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. So, that's what occupied my brain, basically around age 18, was <laughs> mostly these games. <laughs> it, was, it was an early 20s, late teens, early 20s discovery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I literally, I think I've, Bugs, I've told you about this, but my first copy of Sam and Max Season 1 is for the Wii. Oh yeah! It was bought in a Best Buy. No, it was weirder than that. It was bought in like a CD store. God. <laughs> in a mall. Back in my day. Mm. Uh huh. Good night, Good Crystal, night Crystal Pearl. Pearl. We'll see you around. Thanks for hanging out. God. The, it, it's just a beautiful series, kind of. It's sometimes worrying. Yeah, I do think the copy was like $10. <laughs> I don't think Sam and Max season one was a big hit on the Wii. What? Is that true? I know, shocking for some reason. I mean, it turns out maybe the kids weren't up to date with weird indie comic gags. I don't know. I don't know. I think children love that. I think children do like it sometimes. I did. I think this, I was that kid. this soft brush might be a wee bit too soft. Hmm. It might be a little bit. It's a little chunky. Yeah, that's the thing. Should you drink the rest of the juice in this jug? It's half full. Only if you got room for it. You would think they would have a copy for every nursing home just like these <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to subject uh, my senile grandpa to Sam and Max. I think it's good for him. Yeah, they love the... I think, yeah, it helps keep the mind active. That's how it works for me. Hey, Snail. Go to sleep if you can, okay? We'll see you around. Yeah, thank oh, you. Oh, that looks good. I like that. Okay, cool. 
Uh, I've been playing with a bunch of new brushes uh, from the Clip Studio uh, store, so I, I, it's kind of, it's a little bit shuffle tonight while I'm figuring things out. Mm -hmm. Uh, what brushes do I use? Ooh, ooh, so check this out. A lot. A lot. Uh, so I have a lot of brushes. Uh, here's all the custom brushes mm -hmm. I have, and this isn't even like all sorted out. Um, these are my favorite brushes. Uh, the one I'm using right now is HIB Soft, uh, which is like, it's kind of pencil-y, right? And these are all free on the uh, Clip Studio store, except for like a few I have that are like, yeah. hey. And this is the texture it has up close. Kind of this like, dot thing. Yeah, uh, that's kind of one of the things about Clip Studio that's really nice is there's a ton oh, of brushes that you can pick up for free on their like brush like sharing site that they have kind of attached to the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I downside, a lot of them are gonna have names in Japanese, and you're not gonna remember which brush is which until you have it memorized by muscle memory. <laughs> that's kind of just true. Or you learn Japanese. Okay. Or learn Japanese. Or no Japanese. That might help. That might help. <laughs> it's just very funny whenever, like, because I have Procreate for my iPad, which I do use to draw with sometimes. Oh, Procreate's pretty but good. But every now and then I go to it, it's very good. But every now and then if the brushes, I'm like, oh, right. We got a whole, I can't just go get my scritchy scratchy pencil thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, good night, Plasmere. Do you <clears throat> do you have the problem where the Apple I iPad pen feels like weirdly heavy in the front? Uh, I don't, but I think that's just because I used it so long doing pixel art, which mm. doesn't have the same like stroke that I was already really used to how the Apple pencil feels in my hand. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to like adjust to Procreate because I when I draw, um, mm. here's my hand. And here's my finger, and mm -hmm. I have one finger is controlling the pencil, the other is resting right on the knuckle of the middle finger. Um, so when I use the Apple Pen, it's like this really heavy weight pushed right up against the joint for me. Yeah! <clears throat> I don't know, I think it's just... I'm like holding it now. It might be something, or maybe a pen cover could help with it a little bit. I try. Uh, it's right. I don't know. Mm. It's it, got a certain weird heft to it, honestly. Yeah, it it feels like I just want it to be like a little more balanced, and then it would be a perfect sketch brush. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, honestly, I the only thing I can really say that I think I just got used to holding it for a different application, so I don't notice it anymore. Mm. The little cushion is just a scrunched up headband. That's smart. Oh, that is smart. And in ten zombies. Hey, Arsene. How you doing? I just... You get the feeling that everybody else, whenever they see Russell and Eli doing this, they start to get worried. Let's see. Magnuson is just like, Alright! You two fucking knuckleheads explain yourself. <laughs> uh... Side note, I'm always a little bit sad that Magnuson and Eli don't interact very much in Half-Life 2, the episode parts where Magnuson exists as- God. Cute. You gotta draw a heart in there, though. Okay. Uh, cause like, what you do see of them is Magnuson being the one person who's like, You know, Vance, your fucking family stuff can't hold up the rebellion. Which is rough. Because especially in the moment, you're like, wait, but I want them to have a reunion. I care about these characters. But I always love because he's not wrong. Mm -hmm. It's it's rude, <coughs> but it's very funny. There we go. Yeah, Magnuson is a bitch and Listen, I like him. He's... Yes! He's a bitch and I like him so much. And Magnuson's fine with it being gay, but not if it's gay with property damage. It keeps happening. Hmm? Oh, the fire is a good touch. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, Frankie explains info incorrectly. Eli and Russell's mad science inventions through the year. Uh, well, Russell was trying his best to help, but nobody really liked it when he started trying to get 3D printers uh, to try and print, like, snacks 
-hmm. it was a nice idea in practice mm -hmm. but what you kind of wound up with was potato powder like pucks mm -hmm. but eli was the one who thought of trying to see if they could print sculptures out of potato Oh. So, that was one of the more minor ones, but they did get in trouble about it. Uh -huh. Uh And there was also definitely a time when Eli was trying really hard to see if he could invent jump boots, like moon boots, but like they actually worked, kind of like a seven league boot kind of thing. Uh -huh. And really, Russell probably should have put a stop to that instead of working out what kind of surgery you'd need to reinforce your legs for that to work. Oh. See. I mean, he's... Russell's the kind of person who goes like, No, see, realistically, a Gundam would be terrible to run. That's why we should make it so you're riding a giant robotic centipede. Perfectly smooth. <laughs> Oops. Now, what do you have selected? Uh, there is also the time when they started trying to work on a robotic Oops. spy head crab imitation, which Barney just wasn't happy about for a few reasons. <laughs> Generally speaking, Barney prefer people stop building things shaped like a head crab in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're going to do that, please don't leave the half-finished robotic head crab out. Please. 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 Especially if you're going to cover it with realistic silicon. Otherwise known as the day that everyone found out Barney Calhoun swings on instinct. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else did they invent together? Well, before everything went mad, uh, they actually want. It's important to know that really, Eli did buy the Soda Stream with good intentions. He did. He really did. It was Russell's idea to try and see if they could get the cantaloupe in there. Ah. Ah. I see. Ah. <laughs> Listen, sometimes a man has a cantaloupe and he sees carbonation and... What if a bubbly watermelon? Hmm? Hmm? What if? What if you carbonated a watermelon? What if you drill a hole in a coconut? God. What's up? Uh. Oh, I'm just reacting to what Sarah Murphy just said. He teamed up with Rick Baker, Baker for the skin, who's a key member of the Resistance, aka the guy who did the practical effects for an American werewolf in London. God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a soda stream is a device you can get that will allow you to carbonate beverages at Home, which the idea is usually that you can use it to make like homemade soda mm. but you can also just use it to like carbonate some water or carbonate fruit juice which i think i've actually been tempted by them before they seem like a fun idea but also it's counter space and it's very difficult to justify a purchase like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah there definitely was some incident where it was like all right and you carbonated the yogurt yes yes we did Yes. Didn't someone at one of the milk hells try to use a... They did. They did. I'm dimly remembering that. Oh, yeah. What got Soda Stream? What got Soda Stream? Just a milk hell concoction, I think. That's probably bad enough. I mean, if you put... If you front-loaded a watermelon with seltzer water, because now I'm thinking about it, if you drill a hole in it and you just right? put seltzer water right? in, it could be pretty good. Oh, see, Rad Basad. Thank you I'm for hanging always... out. We'll see you. Yeah, internets be like that sometimes. I Okay, I'm never that big on a lot of watermelon juice or watermelon water when it's like artificial to the wrong concentration, but actual watermelon juice is a yeah, good fucking Yeah, fucking banger, man. Like, you get some lemon in ooh, there, ooh, 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 you get some tahini on there, oh man. You can carbonate watermelon as much as grapes, probably, well hey, hey, hey. Carbonated hey, grapes, listen. hang on. That sounds refreshing, frankly. Huh. 
that will explode? I mean, maybe. So? Maybe a little. It's the taste I can eat. Like, leave me alone. I'm, it's It sounds good. It's watermelon smashing. It's refreshing for summer. Just hose everything down afterwards. Do it on a tarp. Yeah. I want to drill a hole into a watermelon and funnel strawberry Fanta into it and be punished for my hubris. Ooh. Oh, that sounds Ooh. nice. Oh. Ooh, and then the watermelon would be all strawberry Fanta infused. Ooh. A rotten watermelon exploded on my mom once? That's amazing, Leon. Great shit. Fucked up. Fucked up and evil. <laughs> That's how the experiment ended. Two men with a melon-covered room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost certainly yes. Now it was all doing good until we got to the mango. God. Magnuson, listening to the story, is like, at no point did either of you two consider putting the fruit into a separate vessel. Nope. It's not really sporting, is it? If you drill a hole in a melon, please drill exhaust holes. No. <laughs> You're probably correct. But also the phrase melon exhaust holes is very funny. The next time I make a melon bong, I'll think very hard about it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's done that though, right? Yeah, if Someone's there's apple bongs, that. there's melon oh. bongs, of course. Now, there's a certain kind of weed dude who's fucking MacGyver. Yeah. It's frightening. Yeah. I wonder if a pineapple like, There's always that one okay. dude who's like... Because it's so acidic. Pineapple, I get that. But it's sweet. use for a pineapple, frankly. Listen Just to the... eat the pineapple. In Hawaii, we have a lot of pineapples laying around. Well, not That's laying around, true. but... Melon Bong is a base baseball name. True. <laughs> uh, obviously, all... The entire fan base would decide as one that their cousin to real baseball player, Peanut Bong. Are they dead? At rest in violence? I Art, think mark? Peanut Bong is dead. It's been a hot minute. <sighs> Thank fucking God. I mean, and I mean, it's very bad any player in baseball died. <laughs> also. You don't like Peanut Bong? He saved us. Peanut Bong is alive. He's just shadowed. Good. Good. That's tonight's incoherent baseball message. Peanut Bong is alive. He's just shadowed. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in baseball? Do you all want to know what's going on in baseball right now? Oh, you should you should tell him. Tell him, Frankie. Tell him. Okay. Tell him. Okay. Tell him. Tell him. So tell I'm him. going to explain one thing first. I am currently a fan for the Yellowstone Magics, Uppy Downy. They're a good team. I've be I've settled in well. I really enjoy it there. We currently have eight players total oh. playing. Lenny Hashim, thank, thank you for, for the following. following. Yeah, literally. Uh, so right now the seasons have a new modifier called Redacted, which just removes a player from your team. It sends them to fucking EBDB, uh -huh. and then eventually someday they come back, but sometimes not for your team. Like. That's how we lost Chorby Short. She's on the mil she's on the millennials now. Oh Good really? Luck. We do love her. Chorby Short, Chorby Strong, Chorby hit the fucking Oh shoot, I actually made uh -huh. that on the farm. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh -huh. Listen. <laughs> Listen, it's on the brain. Uh -huh. I mean she probably does. It's a very small one. She's very small. Uh, but as a result, the Yellowstone Magics were down to eight players. But here's the fucked up thing. We're doing good. We're doing great. The entire league is still flooded with sharks that are attacking players, and Chorby's soul did die again, probably for the best, but also it's bad because now everyone else is getting attacked by sharks, because before that, Chorby's soul was absorbing all of the shark attacks, aka consumers. They're not actually sharks, they're consumers metaphors are for the week. I don't um, think she knows how to use one. Probably not. So I think it would I look mean, like this. I mean, she's... <laughs> 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 yeah. She's playing it like a trumpet. Yeah. She just hops up to it. One of the millennials is kindly offered a pass and it just makes a foghorn noise. <laughs> 
rattles the building. God. <laughs> and then everyone's just left in the bong water soaked fucking aftermath and Chorby short squeaks. I win! <laughs> I did weed the best! And everyone goes, you sure fucking did, Chorby. Oh, we're so proud of you, Chorby. You won at weed, Chorby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this is just how Blazeball is. Blazeball is a surreal horror Blazeball fantasy sport team. That's all you really need to know. Mm -hmm. Chorby wins at weed. We're all very proud of her. Um, that's a clip for you. Anyways. <laughs> So, Yellowstone Magic has eight total players right now. Here's the fucked up thing. We're going to the postseason. Almost certainly. Oh, wow. We, we might become... I don't know if we're going to become champions, but the crabs are in party time. Well, goddamn. Which, Congrats. for those of you unaware, all baseball teams cannot stop playing baseball, even when it has become mathematically impossible for them to make it to the postseason. So, baseball teams that are no longer capable of making it into the postseason mathematically enter party time. Don't worry about it. Yeah, the Baltimore Crabs. They're like fucking long reigning champs. It's like them and the ti them and the Hades Tigers are really the most powerful fans. They're like teams. I'm thinking about. Oh the yeah, I'm sorry about the Georgias. Jester writes they had it rough. They they were contenders. They really were. There Many we stripes, go. one tiger. I had to think Remember, about it. Remember, tigers never look back. <laughs> oh, that's some good hat brim work. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I had to the fucking rotate in my mind. Like, okay, how does the fucking brim of the hat work at the side angle? Because when you draw the brim of a hat, you have to do, like, the circle for a hat. Which mm -hmm. then is actually, like, the cross volume of the volume. And then, uh, let's say this is uh, the underside of the hat. While you demonstrate hats, I'm gonna be a you real quick, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Back in and then, the brim of a hat is a bit of fabric that's kind of, like, curved up and folded down and curved to match this. So, have to think about, like, okay, how tall is the hat? How wide is Russell's forehead? If I'm drawing this at, like, this angle, it's actually a little easier to cheat the hat in, because I can at least show, like, you know, the same way that you would show, like, if someone's skirt is in the wind, you show the volume by having, like, a little bit of the uh, underside of the fabric showing. You can do the same thing with the hat, but, ugh. Brimmed hats. Nightmare. Nightmare. Beast of hats. You've learned this from drawing many DJ? Yes, there's many styles of hat! Yes! You're right, there are a lot of hats in the world. It's fucked up. I don't think we should have them. <clears throat> I think hats should be outlawed for the sake of artists. I think that would be nice. Russell's all forehead? The hat curve is effed? Yes, yes, yes. Big agree on every account. It's cool to have a character that wears a hat until you realize you have to draw a hat. Yup. Hey, you know what I fucking did? Okay? I went from being really into Sam and Max and having to draw like, okay, here's a funny dog head that's shaped like a pin and I have to draw a fedora on it so I have to get real fucking good at drawing fedoras, so okay. Hat? Hat? Uh, this'll do. Okay. To like, and that was a stylized in-thing cheat into like, okay, now I'm really into Lupin the Third, and I draw Jigen all the time, and he's also wearing his fucking hat always. So, hat, hat, hat. I cannot escape fucking hats. The worst part is I trained drawing on TF2 in high school. There's no escape. You understand your struggle? If hats were outlawed, I'd kill someone? Yeah, that's true. I do, I do like wearing hats. I am a hypocrite. Hats are very comfy, especially after I've shaved my head and shit. Oh, feels good. Love hats, never drawn one in my life. Lucky. 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 <sighs> I had on a ha fresh shaved head? Yeah, you understand, Puzz. I return. Hello! Hello. Yeah, hats are bastards to draw a little bit, which is why it always cracks me up that Monkey Punch 
was just the fucking best at whipping out a hat. Oh my but god. But he also had a specific stylization. <laughs> 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 Where the brim kind of gets abstracted into like a diamond in his style. Yeah. But it, it looks really good. It really does turn into a fucking like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it looks great, so he's allowed, I guess. Yeah, honestly. Oh, of course, and he got his chin. That doesn't look great. <laughs> it's been worse, is the thing. That's true. It's not the worst chin he'll ever have. <laughs> That's the great thing about fucking Lupin the Third is that all the characters are mostly like, if you get the right number of items on them, it'll be it's fine. You know who that is. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, Polka Dot Patterson did get replaced with an alternate dimension version of them this election, and now they are horrible at pitching. That's all legitimate really? fact about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, alternates. Uh, it's been a whole thing with alternates. Also. Did I tell you that someone, uh, that someone trapped in a peanut shell actually wound up at bat? What? Really? Yeah. Okay, so in Blazeball, sometimes people get trapped in peanut shells. This used to have to do with a giant angry god that was a peanut. Yeah. Uh, they're dead now. We killed him, but unfortunately Hooray. people still get shelled. A lot of times it's a side effect that happens now because of people who've been touched by the peanuts, godly forces, and they quote, taste the infinite, uh -huh. and then they wake up and someone's been peanut shelled. It's kind of fucked up. That's a little We don't blame up. them for this. No, of it's course It's a little not. fucked up. Turns out maybe being under the control of, of a giant evil god is bad for you in the long run, even if they're dead. What? Fucked up. What? I know, right? Uh. But so sometimes people get peanut shelled. When you're in a peanut shell in Blaze Ball, you can't be called up into rotation. So you're effectively like null, inert as a player. You get skipped over. But someone got swapped mid game with someone else who had been up to bat. And then the player in the peanut shell was at bat. And one of the basic rules of Blaze Ball is the pitcher must pitch. So. <laughs> Oh. We all kind of as one. We all kind of. They wound up drawing a walk. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are all forced to imagine their teammates really dutifully rolling a giant peanut shell up to first base. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's wasps because it's actually a default uh, Twitch feature. It's yeah. Like, you know how they suggest, like, hey. You want to use your channel points, what if you use them to release a live wasp into a random viewer's home? And like, we didn't know... We didn't that, know... Like, we just kind of... We weren't planning on streaming a long time when we first started. It was kind of mm -hmm. impulse, so... Good night, Aroki. Can't turn it off. Yeah. Good night, Aroki. Um, okay, so I've contacted Twitch about this and basically they told me, mm -hmm. like, you know, basically it's like, well, do you want to delete your account and start over? I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, oh. so you got the wasps. Like, there has to be a way to fix this, and You're they're like, no. You're supposed to turn off the wasps before the first time you go live with yeah, channel points or active. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't really know. We kind of, like, I, I would have thought that, like, that solidifies when you hit partner, but... Mm. Oh. No. Nope. Nope. Thank we're you, stuck Amber with Bunk it forever. For releasing wasp. <laughs> now we're stuck with it. But luckily chat seems to enjoy it, weirdly, so... I mean, so... Oh, there they go. There they that's go. Fine. There they go. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna clear out the wasps from last time in here so that we get an accurate count of tonight's. Okay, okay. If you say so. Ago, three days ago, thank you, Cause. Three days ago. I forgot to clear them out at the beginning of the stream, so I have to do it by hand now. <laughs> yep, it is okay. Uh, <laughs> what? No. Okay. We would never lie to you. Okay. I... Hmm, my internet's too bad to really open up and Google anything in the middle of chat, but I'm suddenly thinking about, like, okay, mm -hmm. Alex was a baby and toddler in literally any point in time between 2001 to 2009. 
Right. Was Blue's Clue still on the air, or is this Dora the Explorer era? Um, both, actually, I think. This was mm, Blue's both. Clues That's... by the time Steve had left. The pre era. That's right, Steve went to college. Yes. That's yes. A... I. I kind of like that because I always like thinking like, okay, what was like Eli? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like Eli couldn't do Teletubby. I feel like he was in real danger of getting like echo lolia about the Teletubby noises. Oh god. Like, and the man is just like half asleep like, la la, tinky winky, play, tubby pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Eli and Azian are just laying awake, just <laughs> trying to not think about a time for Teletubbies. Time for, for Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Time for Teletubbies. As just kicking Eli as he does his impersonation. <laughs> Stop! I'm getting a divorce. Time for Teletubbies. God. Time for Teletubbies. <laughs> Alex like to watch Booba? Fuck! <laughs> oh god, no. No. You know, we actually... Mm -hmm. Hi, Kalish. Uh... Oh, I, li I love Teletubbies Hi. as a kid, too, don't worry. <laughs> um, we actually, uh... The Jammer Quiet emote caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we had a booba official send us a booba plush uh, for the uh, my dad's site. And the, the plush, it was one of those talking, like, robot, like, oh. Tickle Me Elmo ones. And, oh man, oh. that thing basically just lived to make fart oh. sounds. It would go like, I mean... and then flatten itself, and you'd have just like this scary baby like peering out of like fluff. And... God! And they we... got gifted one of those, and one day Eli walked in, and Alex had just like taken it apart to see how it worked, and he's like, I'm okay with this actually. <laughs> just this like. This one's good. Good child. Good baby. We we're all just standing around staring at this thing making fart noises. <laughs> Even the cats were like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, Why is this in our house? It when there's a bug she doesn't recognize. Yeah. No, this was- She is uncomfortable. She doesn't like glass tables. Yeah. This was with my dad's cats who were absolute himbos. One of them, um, uh, oh, I used to go down to the, the stream nearby and I'd catch like insects and one time I brought back a crayfish and so my dad put it mm -hmm. in um, a little bowl and we were looking at it. We were gonna take it down and put it back in the stream later. We were just, you know, looking at it and talking about like science and stuff because I was a curious little kid. And this cat just sticks his nose right in the fucking bowl. Just like, what the fuck is that? Doesn't use his paw God. like someone might and then I just, I look over and I remember hearing this like, meow. And the cat is like sadly sitting there because the crayfish is pinched onto its cheek and is just hanging there. Didn't break anything, didn't hurt it, just stuck itself on. Maybe. And we're just like, oh, Tom, buddy. That's no good. Eli takes Alex into work sometimes and she brings her booboth toy with her and scares the shit out of Gordon. <laughs> God. Oh. I should say crawfish, I, not crayfish. I feel like what happens is like Alex just. Alex decides that she's done holding it and she just accidentally puts it like in an open box that no one can tell where the noise is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know just this... suddenly in the middle of the work like hours later something sets it off and Gordon just hears Booba. God The the fucking You know at the start of Half Life One how they show you like okay this is a head crab watch out by having them in teleported into the little tubes it's just like there's the one head crab in there and it's just fucking terrified because in the next one the flattened booba has just wedged itself. <laughs> Gordon just Eli, I'm so 
I'm so sorry, I got- Ah, <sighs> crying my fucking knee. What a day. Hi! We're back on. Hi. Oh, that was us. Yes. That was the whole thing, huh? Yes, that was the Hi, whole folks. damn thing. Hi. Hi. I love OBS. What a program. OBS is a good program that in no way is trying to actively kill us. It's definitely not attempting to give bugs a stroke. Not even a little. No. <laughs> Killed by Booba. God. When I had a kid, I had a toy of the fridge from Blue's Clues that would make some kind of noise after a certain amount of time after opening it, and me and my sibling fridge? would treat it like a time bomb. That's very powerful. The fridge? Was there a Blue's Clues fridge? Hang on. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I'm also going like, oh yeah, there was a fridge on Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues fridge. I gotta be honest, I mostly remember like Mailbox and Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper. Oh my and god! Baby yeah, look at this! Yeah, huh? Uh, okay, so... Get yourself a spoonful of peanut butter, cause. Yeah, that would be good. Um, my story about something like that is when I was in elementary school, um, I was part of a group about asthmatics and how we, we know how to take care of our lungs and we're going to learn healthy mm -hmm. tools and activities. And they gave us a, mm -hmm. uh... A CD, a video game about all the, the diseases and things in the world that want to kill you if you're an asthmatic. And it had like villains that were like, like, oh, I'm, I'm germs and I'm gonna infect your lungs and kill you unless you wash your hands all the time. And then one of them was like the representation of dust. And he was just a dude made out of dust with like a whirlwind tornado, right? The problem is that if you idled in his room, it would try to get you to talk to him by just having him go like, <laughs> So, I'm playing on my mom's laptop. This is Hawaii. It's late. I'm a latchkey kid. I'm usually home at like 10 mm. to 11 to 12 p.m. Well, 12 a.m. Uh, in the dark, I'm just trying to sleep. I figure that night I'll sleep in the living room. It'll be nice. Um, I forget the laptop is near me, and I'm laying awake just trying to sleep on the futon, and in the dark, from the closed laptop, what has turned itself on? <laughs> Scariest thing of my life. I took the CD out, I broke it in half, I never played it again. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, my version of that is just the Lego Island story, which I oh, think I've yeah. told before, but always cracks me up. Tell it again, uh, it's great! So when I, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when I was little, my uncle Eric, who was a complicated fellow, but the dad of my cousin, uh, they're still in contact, I think. Uh huh. Uh, and he was a very, I don't know what his deal was, he was like an early programmer, and somehow in like, the early to mid 90s he was capable of pirating kids games oh shit which, cool rad uh -huh. that's how i got to play like all of the putt putt games is because he handed my parents like a fucking pirate like like burned cd or something mm -hmm. and that's why my copy of lego island was pirated and it was fine for the most part i played the fuck out of that game i was I was a poor kid, and we did not have many games of any kind whatsoever, so I played the shit out of Lego Island. Uh, and you know, it's a weird game already. You like wander around this giant weird half-empty island, and you can click on every single NPC, and it'll change their headpiece, like the hat or hair they're wearing, so you can just make everybody bald if you want to. <laughs> it's weird. Get their asses. Uh, and yeah, I do have, like, the fucking, uh... I'm the local pizza delivery boy! I got the mo- Oh god, that's way too on point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can do that. Dark powers. <laughs> but my dark backstory is that actually I can't read. Which is fucked up, but that's true? That's oh. true. That's oh. a plot point. Oh. Is that he has dyslexia and has trouble reading. Oh. Which is why he can't see the sign hey, fact, that says you. not to deliver the- Oh, thank you! Yo, emphatic! That's very kind of you! Uh... 
the so he can't read the sign that says not to deliver pizza to the brickster which i'm going to be honest i feel like isn't the delivery boy's problem mm -hmm. i think there's several other people who are in the steps of the brickster evil criminal brick fucking lego man evil criminal mans got a phone and called the pizza place and i guess mama and pod's papa pizzeria just decided yeah sure <laughs> fuck prison i guess uh, <laughs> good for them so you kick off the only plot of the game when you do that one singular task and i'm mm -hmm. glad you got peanut butter cause good so the whole game was fine i could walk around the islands i could go to the races which are some of the more surreal big video game set pieces ever done are based in that race for some just beautiful strangeness i don't know mm -hmm. uh can do all that and it's fine until you unlock the brickster which is when my copy of the game began to break oh no in total glitch fashion like the world broke apart, the colors got fucked up, but it was still playable to a certain degree. You were just stuck in the part of the game where you have to chase the brickster and pick up the pieces of bricks he got. And I have now since realized that part of what was happening is the bricks he were throwing was getting replaced by random items. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, it was, in retrospect, it's incredibly cool. Kind of traumatized me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to me, like, the brickster was destroying the world. Oh, is the music run out? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay, good. But yeah, literally just the world, like, I would reset to before that point in the save file, but I've never seen the end of that game. Good God. He did, he pricked me. He bricked you. I'm gonna destroy your concept of world, kid! <laughs> what is the real and the unreal? Oh, good. But yeah, uh, it's actually left me with- It's a lot of why I like Petscop, weirdly enough. Oh yeah, I, I, bet. I feel like there's a very- There's a very particular kind of horror that has to do with, like, the weird shovel- Not- Lego Island wasn't shovelware. I don't. I think it was better than average shovelware, anyways. Uh -huh. But like the weird games that you played as a kid, just because you had them, mm -hmm. and like having stuff glitch and become unreal, and finding something secret and weird. Oh yeah. I mean, listen. The Brickster literally taunts a child about being bad at reading. The Brickster has no morals. I had the uh, corruption glitch happen to my Pokemon game where it would play the oh. uh, messed up music. Yeah. Oh. Man, That's that was scary, one. but fun as a kid. It, yeah, exactly. It's like the kind of like little scares that I think are good for you in a weird way. Yeah, I think but, so too. Like, God, imagine like I'm I'm always I love the Freddy like the the FNAF series in part because I know that there's kids who just love that series. And I would have loved it as a kid. Mm -hmm. I would have loved it so much. I think everyone gets nervous of Lavender Town. God. Okay, do you remember, have you ever like gone through all of the wiki listings for all the different kind of glitch Pokemon? Yes, I love doing that. My favorite one is the one from Ruby oh. and Sapphire that's just, uh, mm -hmm. this. There's something so appealing about it, I don't know. Yeah the weird like placeholder image of it there's something very distressing about it yeah i uh, like it a lot my favorite i forget what it had to be from a pretty early generation because i feel like only those early generations like made actual like sprites happen through the glitches these days you get the placeholders or the uh the eggs uh-huh but it's something where it just is this strange like dot or streak of red and if you got into battle with it you'd just be locked into hearing the like distorted music it played back oh that's and cool. so people would draw people would draw art of it visualized as singing oh i love that it was lovely i'll i'll try to track down there which one i'm thinking of oh hey too many rubber ducks oh shit ducks there was an old OBS Flash game that- hang on, I'm gonna find what you just said. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
There was this old PBS Flash game, says Ducks, where this weird yes. money plane thing showed you the end of the world, which is caused by pollution. It freaked me out so much. Ooh. I've seen that. I've seen that. Bogley reblogged something about that. Oh, it sounds like female symbol from red, blue, yellow. She sings. That must be it. Thank you, Gauze. Um, one of my favorite ones, like what Ducks just said, is, mm. uh, I think I showed you a little bit of this. Do you remember? It's a post going around Tumblr occasionally. The, uh, mm. Australian forestry game that has, like, oh, yes. and there's a nightmare where all your friends are killed and a dragon came and polluted everything and all the nice. faceless trees died and Oh, I just- I watched some of it and it really fucking haunted me. And then immediately goes back oh, to- he... Oh shit, thanks, Emphatic. Thank you for the gift sub, Emphatic. That's very kind of you. Forestia? Yeah, and then immediately Ooh. it goes back to like, Oh, it's Grandpa Tree's birthday, let's get him a gift. Quite a dream you had, huh? <laughs> I feel like that sums something up about kids' media in the 90s. There was like- there was this weird thing about kids' media, like, especially when, like, millennials were kids, or people, like, roughly in that age group, where, like, everything had kind of tried to push past the 80s, like, okay, we can't just make ads for kids. But then they pointed at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and said, okay, you're very polite. <laughs> but there was, like, a vague sense of, like, okay, we gotta have positive messages for kids. And I, I like that. I think there's ways to do that a little more elegantly than have been done in the past, but it's a good motive. But every now and then, I feel like in the 90s, they handled that by just giving us all anxiety about shit that we could not control. Mm -hmm. Hey kids, want to get really fucked up about pollution? Don't worry, you can just cut the plastic can <laughs> thing. Puzz says, Good. you just unlocked a memory of me playing Oregon Trail and naming all my characters and horses after friends and sobbing when they died because I didn't understand inventory management and there was no one to. Oh, Puzz. Oh, oh no. Puzz. You gotta just name everybody farts. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to play. That's how you, you live. If you name someone fart in real life, you'll never get attached. Try it with your child. I got to the end of that game multiple times because I would just play it at school. I I'm would. Kinda good at it. I could never. I I died like immediately every time. I got good at it because I was good at the hunting mini game. Oh, right on. The hunting mini game was fun. Things I like that. Yeah, genuinely. You spent all your starter money on horses. Well, understandable. Puzzles horse advent adventure. <laughs> Update, we have been eaten by the horses. <laughs> Haunts. I keep, uh, I keep warning ya. I keep warning ya about the fucking horses. No one listens. Oh, uh, because I got reminded about by the 90s. So, I will always consider kind of cowardly that Half-Life series places the Black Mesa event as happening in such a vague time zone. But... I do like the idea that it happened in 2009, because you all need to know how canonical it is that Gordon Freeman and Barney Calhoun almost certainly smoked weed and played Sonic Adventures. Thank you. You have been informed. I'm trying to think about what kind of chow they would raise. That's a good question, because I mean... I think they would be doing their best, they would care for the chow, but I do think Gordon would be like, well, I want to see what happens. <clears throat> they would have played Sonic 06 while blazed. Ooh. 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 Here's the worst part. They would have played Sonic Adventure first, because I, I, I feel like Barney probably didn't get to play those games when he was younger, like there wasn't really a console around. So, like, Gordon gets to be gay and be like, Oh, well, if you could come play video games with me in my science storm, if you wanted to. So that's a good excuse to hang <laughs> out. But it's like, as a well, we can play this, and then we'll, like, be caught up by the time Sonic 06 comes out. <laughs> Fuck. And that's, like, the world is ended and stuff, and it's like, uh -huh. almost, I'm sorry, Gordon, Sonic 06 never came out. <laughs> well, so it's like, 
What? Yeah, I've got a copy of it. It never came out. <laughs> Gordon can't know. <laughs> Gordon, the Sonic team was disbanded shortly after the Combine arrived. Uh, uh, it, it was very sad, Gordon. Bad and fucked up. Yeah, Gordon, he's hanging on by a thread. They can't do that to him. It was gonna oh, be we're so all about the free cool. hoop here. It's... Blaze Gordon the cat was gonna be seven. in it, Barney. God. God. I think Gordon would be a big Tails fan. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for Gordon sure, for sure. Gordon was like a, a trans you, teenager when he got to like Tails' song at the end of his story and he's like, Yeah! Yeah! I, my pops... Hey, Gremlin Vision, thank you for the raid! Hey, thank you for the raid! I'm Friendly Frankenstein and that's Bugs! Hello! My pops wants Bugs to... Bugs is who's drawing! Yes. My pops wants to get a tattoo of Eggman's logo on his shoulder so bad. <laughs> <laughs> He should! Thank you for the follow, Mr. Dark Eye. This one. He wants to get this one. God, that's kind of cool, though. Right? I'm I like, feel damn, like, oh, Pops. Is he getting it in, like, solid black is the idea? Yeah, he wants to get the solid black version. See, my Pops is the one who has the Nights into Dreams wedding wing ring already, so. Yes. Oh, have I yes. ever shown that off in on stream? I don't, don't know if you've shown it off on so. stream before. I think you've mentioned it before. Hang on, let me see if I can pull it Maybe up. Maybe you real just showed quick. me in Discord. I can't remember. Oh anymore. yeah, I think I only showed Puzzbox. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. Someday I genuinely think that it would be a fun stream idea if we could get Bugs's pops on to play Knights for us. Yeah, he's genuinely <laughs> like an expert. Of us are actually. Bugs knows the game from watching him play it, and I've never played it, so... So... I, I feel like that would be the best possible demonstration of it. Uh, my mom had this custom made for my pops by some other friends that are jewelers, and whenever, uh... Mm -hmm. Whenever it gets shown to oh. Pops' family, they think it's the devil, so it wasn't great for us at first, but, um... <laughs> but now people understand it's from a video game, so... Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, my pops loves Nights in a Dream nice. so much. Yeah. Which, it still kills me you were telling me about, like, him after one of our ballin' streams. Didn't he say, like, so how was it? Yeah, and I- you like, well, there's a skeleton of a good game, and it- what, what did he say? Uh, it really killed me at the time. So what it was, was, it was- like, that's the worst. Yeah, it- I'm laying awake because it's like 3 a.m. But mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the dark because I'm Still trying thinking to. Thinking about Balin. Yeah, I'm trying to pretend I'm asleep because I'm a good child who sleeps. Definitely, I'm a good 27 year old adult who sleeps. This is what I look uh -huh. like now. I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And I'm just laying there, like completely in the dark. multiply. And, and happy birthday to your dad tomorrow, Squeebus. Happy birthday! And, uh... <laughs> my pops... We, we have a hallway to the bathroom and I just hear, like, mm -hmm. my pops in the hall and he's like, so how was it, kid? I'm like, oh, well, it was like a skeleton of a game that could have really been something, because I'm like silent for a minute and I'm like, no, I can't pretend to be asleep. And I'm like, it's, it's good. It, it had... It has a something. skeleton of a good game. It has good bones. Yeah. Something like that. It has good bones, and he's like, oh man, that's when it hurts the most. And then he just, yeah, like... Yeah, that's what it was. And then he just that's vanished down the hallway. The I feel like that carries so much weight, knowing what, like, an old fan of, like, Knights and Sonic and everything he is. He... He un he gets it. He knows. He understands. Yeah, exactly. Like knowing how Nights into Dreams the sequel shook out. Oh, it had a sequel. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, there was yeah, a yeah, Nights into Dreams one. sequel, uh, for the Wii. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Um, it's um, it's not very good. Is the thing. <laughs> Oh no! My pops was so excited for it to come out. And... Oh. 
and like like we didn't know him when this happened but it was uh coming out for the Wii and he was like all excited like Naoru Oshima did this and it's gonna be so good and yada and they so first of all Knights' whole thing is that Knights is like a silent gesture in pantomime but they decided that the audience wouldn't understand that so now he's voiced by what? so now they're voiced by a British woman um, it goes no. like, children, you have to come with us to fight in the land of dreams. And there's an owl that they're friends with, and all the uh, all the Nightopians are like HD, but it's kind of like that scary early HD where it's like really way too realistic eyeballs. Minecraft HD. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Oh, it could have oh. been something, but I it... just. I feel like the worst thing I can ever hear about something is they added a voice to a mute character. Yeah. So who wasn't mute in like a Legend of Zelda way. Real fucking I think the we could hear shit. Link say something and I'd be fine. Yeah. But this. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my pops was like, I'm not going to tell you how I feel about this game. I'm, I want you to decide for yourself. You go ahead and play the first level, and I just kind of turned to him and I was like, "This feels really bad." After I beat the first level, and he was like, "Yep, you don't have to play anymore." <laughs> I was like, "Oh." He just, I okay. So he does understand us, because that's kind of how we feel about Balin, but we're doing it to ourselves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was a bit uh, where for my birthday he would just get me terrible fucking games. <laughs> God. <laughs> This is why you're like this. This is why we're both- no. You're like this because of that. I'm like this because of my parent, uh, having been an original scene Rocky Horror person. God. Who is like a direct route to my sincere love of bad movies. <laughs> including live-action Popeye, which is the world's most perfect Popeye movie, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a bad movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. I think it's good. I it's do a too. fun time, but it... it's definitely a bunch of like Popeye skits woven together while like someone just unleashed the world's most ravenous improv man on Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> That's some weirdly good songs. Listen, we're never gonna do better than Shelley Duvall as Olive Oil. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but the incredibly coked out producers of that film saw their one chance for Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall with a romance movie and they fucking took it. God fucking bless. It's so good. And it's got literally one of the best romance movies ever. He need like the song He Needs Me. Oh, he needs me fucking kills me. And I always love that shot where Bluto's seeing red and it's literally the whole set was painted red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you saying? Oh, uh someone should make if anyone out there needs a song for like a shipping fan cam, use He Needs Me. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, also, I was gonna. S I was reminded earlier because we were talking about meat protagonist. I always think it's funny that it's actually canon inside the world of Breath of the Wild that Link doesn't talk because he's functionally having a running anxiety attack. Yeah, I like he, that a lot. It's, it's a detail that you can find, I believe, if you unlock, if you find one of Princess Zelda's diaries in Hyrule Castle. Mm -hmm. Which uh, this run through, I really want to explore, like the entirety of Hyrule Castle. I've never really gotten like the entire Hyrule fields and everything, you know? Oh, that'll and be it's dope. literally like it's like, yeah, no, he can speak. It's just that ever since he's become the champion, he's felt like so much expectations on him that he's terrified that if he speaks he's gonna ruin people's perception of like what the hero is supposed to be. <laughs> it's something along those lines. Don't quote me on it. But I always really like that. Uh even I've, I've been visualizing my current Link as a very competent knight, but I do like the idea of him just like, what if I just stopped talking? What if I just stopped talking and just held the stupid sword? What if I just did that? Okay, okay, okay. It's fine, I know sign language, it's fine, it's fine. But autistic mute Link is pretty real, in mm -hmm. my opinion. I think agree. Much like Gordon, I'm, I'm picking them up and saying, this person gets overstimulated and can't speak. Oh hey, uh, you guys want to see something I'm working on? Speaking of that? Yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Where did I end up? 
put it? Where did I put it? I think I have this in my documents. Did I put it under animatics? Yeah. Oh, uh, improbable. If you love games like that, please look up Super Great Friends LP of a game called D2 by Kenji Ino. That is the pinnacle of very bad games that somebody clearly loved when they were making them. But look at what Bugs is doing! I'm- I'm working on something of interest. Something- something of interest. Uh, and also right now this is part of- Oh no! It merged it all into one thing! Oh no! What? Oh no! Oh wait! Did it save the run sequence? <gasps> no! Oh, that's okay, I can do it again. But you, up you uploaded it to the Discord, too. You uploaded it so I could take a look at it. But yeah, uh, pardon Gordon's weird crotch, but hey, I'm working on a full life consequences sequence for that. So. Yeah! And it went great, Sarah Murphy. Thank you for getting me in contact with that person. So yeah, this is. Uh, my. My role in this project is to eyeball things and go, hey, you could make the hand do the thing like an okay KO. In fact, hang on, let me let me show you guys my rough uh, I have. Because this is on YouTube, actually. Yeah. On, on YouTube. Oh yeah, that's right! You yeah. do have that. Hang on. Okay. I will swap to display capture. There we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, oh wait, actually, hang on. Don't look for a sec. I have to show you my- nope, wrong <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's 11 seconds, it's loud as fuck. Uh, yeah, sound warning. <laughs> Maybe turn it off? No, I guess you need the- the audio. Yeah. Okay. Also, hey, Mick Sanguine. I might have just said hi to you. I don't have much attention span tonight. This is- this is the it rough. Is is. This is the supreme rough of the 11 seconds, when behold. Yeah. Yeah. Screening was started, he found his brother, Gordon Freeman, fighting the final boss. And Gordon said, John Freeman, over here! So, that's where I'm at. I have 11 seconds of work on here. Um, I, I've done more. There's actually, like, animated more, but that's... Mm -hmm. That's my sequence that I'm working on, so it should be fun. Yeah, uh, I've already seen some of Bugs' passes from there. It's gonna look great. In theory, in theory. I'm, I'm learning a lot. Great. I'm learning. That's... Look great. It, I'm learning. No, no, no. flawless. No, no. It's going to be very good and charming, and even if it isn't totally what Bugs would like it to be at its most maximum perfect form, it will have a lot of charm, and Bugs has a good grasp of expression, weight, and motion. Shut up. Ah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Mute me, coward. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, the thoughtful hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I, Animal Adrian, passing. I will def I will definitely just come into your animatic Music. for ten minutes to yell at you that you're good. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Animal Crossing music. Oh, okay. I thought you were typing ban user. Oh, ban user friendly Frankenstein. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Get fucked. <laughs> you decided to edit your first animatic together in movie because you're cheap and fear no one? Good. It's good. I movie. Use, use whatever the fuck equipment you have to hand, frankly. Yeah. Like, literally. If you want to make something and what you have to make it is like whatever came with your computer, fuck it, go for it. You're powerful and God can't stop you. That's true. Uh, I'm gonna angle this up so it's more wrist-like, actually. There we go. I'm, I'm trying Wrists to- Wrists are funny bastards. Yeah, they are. I don't like them, actually. They're jerks. You know what I think about sometimes? Huh. You ever notice that even, like, really skinny characters, when people have the wrist pushed all the way back, they want to avoid using, like, the way your skin rolls back a little bit when you do that? Oh yeah, you're right. right? Yeah. Like, if you push your hand all the- like, if you're using force, you get a little bit of that rubber band kind of look. Yeah. It's always very funny on- it's very funny in a style that otherwise would show, like, that level of definition. Mm-hmm. Like, Obviously, if something's a simplified style, that's not what matters about your rendering. But I notice. 
<laughs> I'm the one that everyone fears. <laughs> Literally, sometimes when I'm giving feedback, I'm like, Now remember, I'm a mutant. I will notice this. <laughs> Nobody else will or should. That's why Frankie's the best at what he does. It's true. I look and then I say things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I go, oh fuck, you're right. Shit. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> you're right. You're so goddamn right. Fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. This is an easy fix. <laughs> Luckily, I at least usually suggest fixes. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you've, you've always got the good advice, man. I appreciate it. I was forged in fucking art feedback, fine art classes where no one wants to give feedback because all they want to do is sit and think about how scared they are about the feedback they're yeah. going to get for their piece. Yeah. So I became Sir Fucking Feedback. Ow. Sorry. Speaking of wrists... Wrists are evil in real life, it's true. They're the funny little joint that wants to get destroyed if you try to use it too much. Uh-huh. It's very fucked up and messed up. This Animal Crossing video has a really fun effect where it just kind of like, uh... Okay, you know on Wayne's 420... 4, 4020 stream the other day, how it kept, like, blurring? It This video does that every so often, just, I guess, to avoid burn-in on your screen. Yeah, that's... That's really fucking funny, though. The, the get high and think of me of Animal Crossing, it's very good. Okay, Adrian says, but one time I had a girl in my crit say, Hey, can we be meaner to each other? And it was the wackiest thing I've ever experienced. You're just trying to get through the day. <laughs> that was a cryptid. You did run into a cryptid. My thing is... Hmm. Mm -hmm. I try to give people an opt-in to, Hey, can I put this bluntly? But usually not about fucking art feedback, outside of like, here's the thing, I'm the friend who will tell you if it doesn't work. I'm that person. I'm the person who will go, yeah, that does look a little broken, and then I'll say, but it looks fine for exaggeration, or I'll say, you could probably just fix it by nudging it up slightly and to the right. Mm -hmm. But you need to be that person for people sometimes. Because mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. what you get is a bunch of friends who go, wow, it looks great. Yeah. Every time. And then, then it goes up and you don't feel so good about it, you know? God, 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 yeah, yeah. Fucking my my special uh, talent from community college mm -hmm. is I can tell when someone was copying a piece off of DeviantArt because boy did that happen <laughs> a lot in my community college. Oh yeah, yeah. I just remember the dude who just traced Latios and Latios. Oh shit. And then put them in his and then put made them like different like it was yellow. No, oh. it's yellow. It's oh. yellow. It's his original Pokemon. Oh. And it was very funny because I could tell he'd kind of been drifting by on teachers not knowing Pokemon. Uh-huh. And I was just like, that is a Pokemon, though. And he's like, yes, but it's my original design. I'm like, no, that's a pose from official art. I, uh, you were relying on never meeting another autistic person in fine art classes. We had a guy Regrettably. who raised tigers in his youth and oh. uh, dedicated every piece he did to tigers, which was cool. Except for the the final day of crit where he came in I'm and worried. had a giant poster in the wall and it was him naked but with tiger ears and a tiger tail <laughs> crouched on the floor <laughs> and it was with a background of space Background of space. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. With singing Valkyries <laughs> pointed to him in oh. every corner. And it was one of those, like, okay, very cool. No, to those of you in chat saying fursona, this isn't what a fursona is. A fursona isn't you wearing cat ears, like, positioned like a cat. This is something else. This is something else. I don't know what, but it was this something, is something else. else. 
I remember just kind of looking at it and all of us in Crit like, well, it's... The composition is great, first of all. Um, I'm pulling rank. If this was supposed to be his persona, this was a shitty way to paint his persona. Like, it wasn't a painting. Is, like, it was a photo collage. A photo of him, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like, a photo collage. Yeah, it was a photo collage. This isn't him drawing himself with cat ears. This is a photo he took of himself doing this with cat ears on. Yeah. That's not a fursona. Uh, well, they weren't ears on. He photoshopped no, wait, in. wait, hold on, hold on. I have an idea. Uh -huh. This is the big cat dude version of when you have a horse girl. That might be it. But they're way too weird about it. Like, really, really weird about it. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Horse girls are good people. I was a weird fucking kid in school. I wasn't a horse girl. But I will always have a huge amount of genuine respect for, like, young gals that just really, really like horses and maybe want to be a horse or befriend a horse. Uh -huh. That's fine. But sometimes you get the, like, adult horse woman who's usually, like, rich enough to own a horse. Oh, and I feel like that's that's what I'm talking about. That gets about a little here. scary sometimes, yeah. It gets really scary sometimes. And horse women, especially when they're like, no, a horse is great. You just make the money. You just make the time. And, you know, I keep it cheap. I've only got three horses right now. And it's like, excuse me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back up. I, I have... I'm familiar with yeah. Like, oh, you only have three horses, do you? I have something to tell you it's like stream related to that. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm from the kind of area where you'd get that sometimes. Usually it was more like ranchers who had a daughter who really wanted to compete in, like, the local rodeo. That's a whole other thing. And possibly connect back to baby me, who was AFAB, having feelings about Jesse. It's very mean of you to send that during. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I fucking get it, I guess. Yeah. God. Yeah. She's happy. She's happy. Oh, none of you are ever going to hear one word of any of this. Yes. <laughs> Oh god, but yeah, I was gonna say, like, okay, maybe sometimes you're a baby gay, and you're AFAB, and it's gonna take you a long time to work stuff out, and you go to a rural area where sometimes the local older girls go to school in blue jeans and cowboy boots, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe this affects you in ways that you only think about later when you're older. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, side note. I swear to god, when you're trans and gay, it makes all of that shit so much harder to figure out. Because, like, there's no moment where I'm like, and then I re and I couldn't, like, realize I was a lesbian. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Like, I know for some people, it's like the feeling of identity is fluid in a way where you're like, I, I, I was, but I'm like, no, I was a very confused little boy doing my best. Yeah. I was definitely perceived as a little girl. And I was, again, doing my level best, and I was like, Oh, tomboy! I'm a tomboy! Why, yes, I'm making teddy bear clothing, why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> There's some very confused ground where, <laughs> where what you get, like, really, like, because it's like, there's only room in the gender sphere for like, oh, you're a boyish girl. And it's like, no, I turned out to be kind of a fruity dude. I remember fucking, my friends had this long form thing where they're like, we're princesses and queens. And what role do you want? And I was like, and my, my brain was like, do you remember that uh, Swedish chef that was on Courage the Cowardly Dog once? Yeah, that's you in this God. game for months, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Fucking god, my binary ass event. The guy who looked like this. You didn't even do the like, I'm the prince kind no, of thing. I just no, went you for the whole fucking, fucking other chef. level. <laughs> From courage the cowardly dog. Yeah. Not even the Muppets. No. Chef or nothing. 
No, this one. God, that's beautiful. With the ladle. Oh, my childhood friend was always princess, and I would be the jester. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my dumbass was out there being like kind of obsessed with Pocahontas, which honestly, I think it's just because we had the VHS tape for Pocahontas. Uh huh. It's like one of the Disney movies we had. I was also pretty obsessed with Nightmare Before Christmas. And here's Pocahontas, a movie with like a girl main character who to some degree has like agency and does cool stuff. But I'm sure my parents were like, okay, good, good. We got one. This is kind of good for our kid. And I'm like, I'm going to go pretend to be Cocoa. And they're like, who the fuck is Cocoa? The hot Indian dude, the native dude that Pocahontas decides she doesn't want to date. Oh. He has no speaking lines. <laughs> Very cool, Frankie. Like, it was that, and, and uh, I watched a lot of Fifth Element, which in retrospect, I'm uh -huh. like, this was self-defense of my parents' fault. Uh -huh. My parents just went, okay, the kid likes Fifth Element, so I can watch Fifth Element. I didn't want to be Lilu. I didn't even entirely want to be, like, the main dude, Corbin Dallas. Uh-huh. No. I wanted to be the goddamn radio DJ superstar dude. Fuck and yes. Fuck yes. It all worked out, baby. Fucking Dream big. Rod. Listen, we got here. We got here. We got We're in here. In the future, I've got a pompadour and I'm talking to strangers on the internet. So. We need to get you a leopard print coat. I think. We do. Stra we fun do. Fun fundraiser now. Twitch, <laughs> get Frankie a leopard skin coat, coat. Please, he needs it or he will die. It's very sad. Thank you. <laughs> No, here's the thing. I know I remember Fifth Element so much. Okay, uh -huh. I can I can literally still remember the fucking exact cadence of unbelievable. <laughs> it lives in my fucking head. <laughs> I haven't actually watched this movie in years. Oh, it would go good with the flamingo cane. You're right, Puzz. Oh, oh yeah, that shit. reminds me. I gotta update my fucking Sona sheet with my new pink cane. Yeah. Because I have a new pink cane. Yeah. Oh, movie you want to be Bert from Mary Poppins? Yeah, good. He ruled. Yeah, that's true. Plus, it meant you got to date Mary Poppins. Come on. Thanks. Mary Poppins you scared me choices. as a child. She did? Yeah, in fact, um, she... to the yeah, point where if I saw the walk fair. around in the parks, I would be like, I would be like hiding behind my mom. And she'd be like, look, oh, it's Mary no. Poppins. You like Mary Poppins? I'd be like, no, ah. Uh. No, I don't trust her. <laughs> no way. Fuck that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. She's, she's gonna take me to the scary chalk fairground, Mom. You don't understand. She's gonna punish me. She knows I've been bad. <laughs> uh, good night, Squeeba. Sweet dreams, okay? Good night, Squeeba. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> good night, Co What? What? No! Who? What? What? No. 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 <laughs> Random zero zero factor. This is for the leopard jacket. This is necessary. $69. Oh no. The alerts are still going through for you guys, huh? I can't hear them. I can't hear them. Well, good. I, I can if I turn the video audio. Okay, it's over now. So good news, the OBS <laughs> alerts work for you all. <laughs> oh, thank you, Zero Factor. <laughs> I, I love seeing here it comes and I'll chat and not understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, the only reason I figured out what was happening so fast is because I can never hear the OBS alerts, and so to be a good sport, I'll turn it on. I'll, I listen to double hell audio for a few minutes so I can experience it with everyone. Good lord. I thought y'all were just really into my Mary Poppins story. <laughs> it's a good Mary Poppins story, although I am going to note that I feel like this set you up for a lifetime of feeling strongly about intimidating women. Listen. Listen. Uh -huh. Listen. Listen. Thank yes. you, Random Zero Zero Factor. You are the patron of for the real. stream. Genuinely, thank you so much. <laughs> How's that random double zero factor bill? Listen, if y'all have to hear the bad noise, I might as well listen a little. <laughs> I get half the cut after all. Yep. 
Good. Strictly good. Which, by the way, is also true whenever y'all do sketch pages that wind up being done on air. Yep. And unfortunately, because I'm bad at math, it's been set at 50% and I can't talk bugs down. <laughs> My girlfriend told me I have to stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Good what else? night, Roach underscore EXE. Thanks for hanging out, Roach. See you around. When I was a kid, I wanted to be the evil snow leopard from Kung Fu Panda, and I have no idea what that says about me. Good taste in movies, mostly. You're a furry. Well, also, yeah. <laughs> it does, <laughs> We were really, we were really the, uh, the two, two dragon, two wolves in your head. It, it means you like intimidating <laughs> character. You're a furry. It means you have good taste, because it's a, <laughs> you're a furry. <laughs> Zero Zero Factor, that was sweet I'm, of you. Listen, more people should have access to Picard Feminist. It's a very important emote. Yeah, honestly. Picard you Feminist is so good. I feel like you can't point at me and diagnose me with furry, because if I was a furry, everybody would know about it right by now. No, I'm the other weirdo. My son is a monster. It's Frankenstein. It's in the name. God, just post your Picards if you got them. Oh god, yeah, ducks, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Frankie were watching the VOD because we, we ended up streaming at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when Adrian came up, we both just like, Yay, I know that guy. Yay. Hey. <laughs> I don't remember what I wanted to be as a kid, but I do remember learning I couldn't marry Ben 10 because he was voiced by Tara Strong and girls couldn't marry other girls. And I, like, had my first sad episode on the living room floor. Adrian! Oh. Aww. Mustafa68, thank, thank you for the follow. Uh, Mustafa, thank you. I am, I am pro-furry, and I dwell with the furries, and I'm definitely closer to furry than not, because I have a Sona that I feel pretty, a lot of ways about that are very meaningful to me. Uh -huh. But I'm also over here, like, other than a really gay, enduring crush on Jose Carriosa from an obscure Donald Duck movie. Eh. But also... Mm -hmm. Oh, Jose. Liz. Speaking of fucking movies that should have made you realize you were trans way before you figured it out, maybe my obsession <laughs> with Jose Carriosa! <laughs> maybe my babyhood, like, whoa, I want to be like that, could have anything? Hmm. No? Hmm. The fixation on Eddie Valiant? Hmm. Oh yeah, I, I felt the same way about Eddie Valiant, actually, come to think of it. There was the kids- it, it's funny, I've realized now as an adult, I'm like, Oh, the part where you see, like, his his naked back is supposed to be funny, because he's, like, broad and hairy and weird looking. Huh. Hmm. Not formative? Hmm. I see. Moth Confused, thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow! I do like seeing Clump, by the way. I do too. Clump is very good. Mm -hmm. oh, what if I open the side stream so I'm actually listening to the music with folks? What? That would be so fucked be... up. It's fucked up. Sometimes I do close it because my internet's unsteady, but it seems good now. Oh, good. I was too old for Wizards of Waverly Place, but I, I remember that one was about at the time. I, I also was a little too old for Wizards of Waverly Place. Uh, and kill a lesbian, it's taken me a long time, but I think I was a trunchbull gay. Ooh. I never had a lot of romantic feeling about Miss Honey, but every now and then I was like, but I could fix her. <laughs> <laughs> I, it wasn't like that, it was more like, listen, I understand where Miss Honey's dad was coming from, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Some of us had to. I know she's the bad guy in the movie, but the actress is looking good, okay? Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. She is oh, a big, muscly woman with one of them uh, the long workout The long-haired butch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and she, like, wears her, like, her special gym uniform? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Honey, I was like, oh, I do want them to become family, and I'm going to have a big thing for found family, but also mean women. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, ducks. Listen. Uh, also, Vegeta, you understand me. 
Oh look, Clump is gonna sing a song. Yeah, no, found family, I, I think, I think that's a lot of things for a lot of millennials. And frankly thinking, speaking, I think it's also true just for like queer people in general and has always kind of been. Uh, my parent is like, they're non-binary, they like ran with like a very queer crowd like all from the 70s on as long as they could. They're, and that's like where I picked up like from them, uh, family sometimes isn't what the family you were born to me isn't always the family that you're born to mm -hmm. uh, which is picked up from a friend because gay culture has kind of always been like this mm -hmm. james and the giant peach oh my god yeah no that's the found family movie right there and also while we're talking about gay baby crushes <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Spider! Ms. Spider! Uh, Mr. Centipede! Oh, but also Mr. Centipede! Yeah. Oh, oh, he bickers with the grasshopper and oh. they get in a fight. Oh. It's good. It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and then, like, Ms. Spider has the little song, like, she tucks James in, because, oh, she's scary, but she actually is very loving, you know. You mm hmm. Know. Mm hmm. As one does. We are talking about James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> Which, because of my hellbrain's memory for music, it's like, oh, hey, you know, I'm literally just like, uh, my you name little maggot, is have you James. ever seen them rising in a, like, something starling sky? I can never remember it past there, but my gay baby brain held on to that section. I still fucking love how sad and miserable James's first fucking song is. Yeah. <laughs> my name he is, is James. It's like he was forced that to come up with it. And... They called me. <laughs> it's fucking that story about Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood trying to come up with Wirt's song. Yeah, yeah, God, God, sing, lover, sing. <laughs> For... For those of you unfamiliar, uh, there's a story from Over the Garden Walls production where during this bit where uh, Elijah Wood, like, where Wirt sings in the inn, uh, when they were doing the voice recording for that, they had written the lyrics, but deliberately written no melody, and they actually did yell at him, sing, lover, sing. Until he started singing. To try and make the atmosphere as awkward as possible. <laughs> oh my... Uh, this information is also from the Over the Garden art book, which is pretty cheap digitally, a uh, little bit spendier, uh, I should say cheap for an art book. I should say cheap for an art book, yeah. so I'm like, you know, $40 or under. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a really good art book. I actually liked how they talked about, like, the production and, like, what they had to go through to, like, find a compromise for the look that they wanted that would be, like, easy to replicate. Hello, Very uh, Gay Molly. Hey! Hey, very gay, Molly. Sometimes you wind up here. That's okay, we're drawn today. Mm -hmm. We're the Hotel the California seven... of Streams. <laughs> oh god, kill a lesbian. I know exactly about what- I know exactly the line you're talking about. Seven! There are seven seas and triple E's in the South Tropics, Commodore! <laughs> god, that movie really gets you for, like, found family and dudes are and people fighting in a way where, like, but perhaps, what if they kissed? <laughs> I don't know why that's the voice I always do when I'm referring to child me. It's like half a John Mulaney bit. <laughs> <sighs> I need- sometime I want to sit down, uh, to circle back slightly to something a little bit related to the sketch page. I want to, like, circle back to, like, what kid stuff was available in the aughts. Mm -hmm. With, like, some assumption that it'd probably have a pirated copy somewhere online for Russell to find and, like, make a copy of. It'd be very funny to, like, see where Alex is, like, old media for kids. But, like, uh, all the Bugs Bunny and stuff, that's pretty timeless. Although yeah. rabbits might be becoming semi-mythical. <laughs> Good night, Leon. Good night, Leon. My only memory is watching it and thinking living in a giant peach would get stinky. You had... You were that kid, huh? <laughs> I mean, you're right. <laughs> but then there was me, who just really obsessed about the scene where they're eating the peach, and it looks so fucking oh, good. Oh, the peach Christ. cobbler, the peach juice, bro. Uh, 
people talk about like, oh, I want to eat the leaf from the land before time. No, I want to eat the peach. Slices. I want to eat the peach. I want to eat that. We should watch that movie like yeah. fucking after stream or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really want to see that one again because it had some beautiful visuals and like. Who is it who does, like, there's someone who does this trick where they, like, spin a chunk of it and slice it up and it, like, falls open with the individual. I was obsessed with that animation as a kid. You know, maybe we should do it as a paint box movie night. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Everyone can be real gay about it. Yeah. <laughs> you always thought I hate peaches, therefore I hate- That's a kid thought, though. <laughs> that is a total little kid thought. I was obsessed with James and the Giant Peach as a kid. I think that was literally one of those, like, ran the tape into the ground things. Oh, that yeah? and, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I watched both of those movies a lot as a kid. The movie is stop My parents are weirdo subculture Gen Xers, so they snatched those off. <laughs> God bless them. Thanks, Mom, and thanks, Parent and Dad. <laughs> uh... Yeah, no, they're stop motion. I don't think they're technically claymation, but James and the Giant Peach is live action and stop motion, and Night Before Christmas is pure stop motion. And if I remember, no, I'm thinking about Coraline is what used the like 3D printing. No, Paranorman was the first time they used 3D printing. Really? Yeah, I remember because it was a big deal that they could get that effect with the uh, the girl with the three faces. That's right, that's right. I just remember, like, as a kid, watching them show off all of, like, the different Jack uh, lip sync and expression plates and it blowing my tiny mind. Oh, man, yeah. Fucking for real. That's right, they used the printing to keep the kids' freckles consistent. That's why they were able to do that in Paranorman. Oh, that's And in so Coraline, cool. you can tell that they don't have that tech because they still have, like, the very solid color look. Which, I will say, I'm always a little bit wary whenever animation starts drifting into finally now we can get all of the pores correct. <laughs> but I think in Paranorman it still looks really good, honestly. Yeah. Because I like, like... The redness of people's faces is something that I like seeing captured. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ, it's got to be a pain in the ass to do an animation of oh, any God. kind. Yeah, for sure. But you know what I realized too is I think part of why it bothers me is because in Pixar movies where they over render everything, it's like over rendered perfect faces, you know? Mm. Like perfect little chiclet teeth. Oh, yeah, that does freak me out. Garless, freckles freckleless faces but with like every individual fucking piece of what little melanin they have mm -hmm. <laughs> paranorman has that real it paranorman makes me think of like like the f it's not the far side style but like how the far side's inking kind of looks oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i feel that Right? It's like that, but for, like, rendering a 3D shape out. It's really lovely. Uh, not a perfect movie, but I'll always be incredibly fond of it. Mm-hmm. Weird oh, final moral, but... The fabric in the sky is great, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My quibble with it is I feel like the moral, actually, it's bad if you lash out at the people who literally murdered you. <laughs> and who visibly haven't actually changed much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're scared, and so you became what they are. Yeah. Norman, I think you could clock the bully one. I think you get one free. I'm just gonna say, okay? <laughs> you could haunt the bully once, okay? What's the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? Mm. Uh, Treasure Planet, I think. That's a good one. Well, it was it was a press event, and I was mostly just I saw there was a jungle gym for kids, and I was so fucking hype about that jungle <laughs> gym I could barely think about the movie when it was playing. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> God, I'm like trying to remember. I didn't go out to movie theaters very often, uh, and I know that I saw like the live action 101 Dalmatians in theaters, but I don't actually remember that. I do remember going to spy to the Spice Girls movie. Uh, 
Speaking of things you probably did as a kid because in retrospect you were gay. <laughs> uh, which I dragged my parent to. Sorry about that one. Uh, but like the first... I actually remember probably Spirited Away, but I know that was when I was like 10. So real answer is probably Spice Girls. Uh, but the one I remember the most vividly is when I got to see Spirited Away on film. Yeah. Dang, that's pretty Ooh. cool. Oh, uh, I still have the world's weirdest tie-in, which they released a quote-unquote comic adaptation of Spirited Away. Oh, no. That was just stills of the film. Oh. Arranged, kind of, into comic panels. Yeah, you know, that's really popular uh, sold at the Kinokuniya. Uh, I'll find a lot of stuff like that. Like, Osumatsu had a whole run that was just episodes okay. of the show arranged like that, yeah. I wonder if that was an actual import then. I always assumed that it was just made for the states for some reason, but maybe it was so popular that they were just like, do you have literally anything that we could translate? You know, come to think of it, Castle of Cagliostro has one of those. Oh, no kidding. I need to dig those out, because I think those were actually cool. Honestly, like, it took a long time for Spirited Away to make it to DVD in a way that we could purchase. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time with those books. You saw Polar Express? Ooh. Oof. Uh, and male wife, I actually don't blame you for being kind of scared of Spirited Away. It's got some fucking... It's got good fairy tale scary bits. Yeah, for real. Uh, to me, like, any movie that's a little bit of a fairy tale should be a little bit scary. But, like, kid scary, you know? No yeah, face is no scary face is for seven. terrifying if you're seven. <laughs> Especially the bit, uh, I always love, I'm, I'm still fond of the English dub of that, because I'm very fond of the bit where they go, Come here, you want gold? Oh yeah, Take I it. like that. Take as much as you want. Take it. That part, oh, oh I really still love that. It's, I think Kleiner's head is a little too big here. It's too full of facts and knowledge. Signs as a baby? Oh man. What? Oh, the parents turning into pigs. Yeah, that part's a little nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you saw Princess Mononoke oh, as a kid? No. Oh, Ooh, that one. that's rough. Okay, I feel like millennials are like the last generation where. When anime was getting imported, there was no real understanding that some of it wasn't for kids. Mm -hmm. And, like, people talk about that as, like, a joke now. Like, haha, the horny anime got put in with the kid. And that's true. That was rough. But it also meant Princess Mononoke was put next to Totoro. <laughs> Bad combo. <laughs> next to Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I saw Princess Mononoke when I was in middle school, and it was a little bit intense for me. Oh, gee, I bet. Oh, God. Wow, Sarah Murphy, that's buck wild. Oh, that version of that was me accidentally thinking that the tape in the VCR was still Sesame <clears throat> Street, but it was Aliens. Oh. And long story short, I threw that fucker behind the couch, and they had to buy the rental. <laughs> But that's gotta be one of those fun crime- In retrospect, I'm always like, that must have been a fun crime scene for my parents to be together. <laughs> Cause I didn't like tell them what happened. Uh -huh. I was that kid. I was the weird kid that's just like, no, nothing happened. Don't worry about it. Oh no, Adrian seeing the Princess Utena movie at 10? Oof. That'll do it. I'm um, trying to think about what's something I saw pretty young that scared me. I, my only oh. formative scary movie experience I really have is one time I uh, forgot the TV was set at volume 100 and turned on the live action uh, 101 Dalmatians. And so it opened with like the bumbling crooks just screaming at full volume and I was like, ah! No! <laughs> yeah, I was very scared. Oh. Uh, realizing that you had a crush on Ponyo and Sosuke, I assume when you yourself were a very little kid, that's pretty cute. Yeah. God, I- Ponyo- I always felt like Ponyo got a very unfair shake, because everyone was kind of waiting- Like, the next spirited away, it's gonna be- And it's not that, but I always adored that movie. Mm-hmm. It was- 
America was very weird about Miyazaki because everyone really loved Spirited Away and then they thought that every other movie that he did ever was going to be a big adventure kind of ish movie and it's like no <laughs> he's Miyazaki <laughs> Ponyo's dad is incredibly gender mm -hmm. no no we were all uh, Ponyo's dad oh my god Ponyo's mom and her animation oh, oh. my god Big woman, big lady. I mean, first of all, big woman, extremely large woman, <laughs> uh, and the bit where she like gently cups her husband, big hand. That's very good. Gently pat the husband. Thank you. Good, good, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also really like the bit where she's like, "Isn't this wonderful? It's an explosion of power of the ocean." He's like, Hun "World end, <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey." <laughs> Love the energy! <laughs> <laughs> and then she's just literally like, shh, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, Ponyo also cracks me up because I feel like it's a very funny story because Ponyo's dad is clearly set up to be about to become a much more normal story's villain. Yeah. Like, aha, and then his kid will have to stop him from doing the evil. No, she's a toddler. So, uh,. She just went in and knocked over all his shit. <laughs> As a toddler do. <laughs> As a toddler do. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, I, I love to Totoro I saw as a very little kid, basically because, like, my mom became friends with, like, an exchange student in college that she kept- that they kept in touch with. Uh-huh. And, like, through that, they knew- they, I don't know how the local video rental place in the middle of fucking nowhere I guess just because every store in the area I grew up in was run by sweet old weirdos for a long time. Uh huh. But they had Totoro, and I would watch it a lot, uh, and I was very attached to it because it's a movie with like a sick mom and an older sister and a much younger sibling, and that was kind of my sitch. Uh, my parent is also uh, disabled, same kind of chronic pain condition that I have. Oh. Yeah, so I was always really attached to it, oh, that's especially sweet. since like. It it was a rural story, and that's kind of where I was at, too. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a lovely one. That's really neat. Oh, heck yeah. No, Totoro is a lovely story, and, like, it's a very funny one, because, like, as I got older, I started to find it more stressful as a movie. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh god, oh Jesus, oh god, the toddler's lost. <laughs> oh god, the part where they fish the sandal out of the lake, oh Christ. Oh my god. As a kid, you're like... Oh, this is scary, but it's fine. Cause like obviously it's fine. I'm seven. I have no concept of mortality yet. God. <laughs> and then like as soon as you become a toddler and you see the bit with like the granny like praying feverishly, I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> but I think eventually you grow old enough again that you kind of appreciate that about the story. Mm-hmm. You're like you know. This is raw in a way that a lot of movies that would be about, like, kids with a sick parent would kind of brush over. Yep. A lot of movies would just be like, and they're brave and strong and take care of each other and everything turns out fine. It's like, I kind of like that the older sister, like, breaks down about it and doesn't have the capacity to also look after her little sister. Because of course she doesn't. It's like, um, it reminds me of Lilo Stitch and Stitch a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right? It's that same feeling of, like, you kind of appreciate it when you get older because it's depicting a tough situation in a very, like, heartful way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, I had some gender about Howl's Moving Castle. No one was shocked. <laughs> Me watching that movie, which, again, has a capable female main character who is very likable and distinct, and my baby didn't know I was trans yet teen ass going, like, so this how fellow. <laughs> <laughs> w oh, to be a, a flamboyant disaster magician wearing a giant pink coat. God. God. Waiting to sh to show off to your true love who hasn't shown up yet. Which, 
I, I do always love the cheesy touch in that movie of like, oh, when he first meets her, he says that he's been waiting for her. And the first time you watch it, you're like, oh, that's to shake off those soldiers. And then you're like, oh. Oh, God, that's right. He's a dip, but he's in love. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for her. I know it's very much not the same story as the book was, but I love it very much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, big, honestly, Nick the Himbo. I think that's why that's part of why I watched a lot of those movies growing up. Because, again, my parents, God bless them, were looking really hard for movies, which, again, is why the fifth element entered the rotation. I have been explicitly told. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to find movies with female protagonists to, like, do shit. Good. Thin pickings. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit also got the stamp of approval for that, too. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, we recently rewatched La Puta, and I fuck it. That fucking movie. Oh, man. It's gore. It's very funny because I do think sometimes I'm like, it's like a fairy tale. It's like, it's the most kind. It's. He's writing Kid Lupin, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit Lupin as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's baby Lu it's baby Rupon. But the, the, the pirate queen charming. is so good. I love her the so much. The pirate queen is so fucking good. My god. Oh, and the flexing scene, of course. Oh, Thanks. yes. Miyazaki, I have said this before. Miyazaki has an unabashed love of age-appropriate titty. <laughs> Of both genders? <laughs> yes. At least aesthetically. Yes, big agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's always of his own age. He animated Fujiko Mine when he was, like, fairly young, and then he graduated to the Pirate Queen. <laughs> this is a placeholder smile. Hang on. There we go. Oh, that's cute, though. Thank you. I've been fighting uh, Eli's profile for a while. God. You think at some point Alex is like, I really love all of these animated movies, but why were they... they all... <laughs> why are they all made with trial has expired for? Oh, God. They all have, like, watermarks on them. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Russell, uh, who is Miami Mike? <laughs> Well, Alex. <laughs> Eli just like, that is not the story. She'll never know. <laughs> Alex's favorite film person, unregistered hypercam 3. Yes, that's Good. what I was trying to think of. Oh, I was just recently talking about The Cat Returns. Uh, that's actually my... F Everyone has one Ghibli movie that's, like, not that well-known, but it's one that you particularly love a lot, and The Cat Returns is kind of mine. Mine is Pompoko. Pompoko's fucking... It's, oh. it's rough, but good. Yeah, Pompoko will rough. rip your heart out and feed it to you, but kindly. Uh, heads, like, legitimately a heads up, if you're a person who has, like, a natural patch of wilderness, that deep in your heart, if something ever happens to it, you're like gonna just cry for a week. Yep. Palm Poco will get you really bad where it hurts. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, it's the one about the Tanukis. And it's also kind of about um, wildlife preservation and protests. It's. As written by. And it's the movie where I'm like, oh, right, a lot of these specific animators were like going to the student protests when yep. they were done. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. But like the cat returns, I always, uh, partially, obviously, I just love because it's got the. I'm like, oh, cool, cool gentleman guy. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> but I always love it because to me, it's like one of the few perfect coming of age films for a girl, where it's not like a girl plonked down into a boy style adventure where it's like and now you get the sword and you fight the dragons it's very cool I, i'll always love it a lot for that let's be pen pals was translated to let's get married but or Whoa. the other way around wow ho 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 
Oh. Hmm. Golly. People always try to talk about how the balls meant they couldn't walk it all the way through. Oh, pff. people are big babies. Yeah, I think it's, it's funny fine. tanukis with big funny balls. You don't even ever see them as like. I I feel like people hear that it has testicles and they imagine like some Fritz the Cat bullshit <laughs> instead of like. They are funny, goofy balls, and they do, like, a couple of goofy bits with them. Mm -hmm. I think those people got sad, and then as an excuse, they said it was because of that. That's my <laughs> It has a lot of funny balls in it. It does. It have... does. Tom Poco is balls cam, let's be honest. If you like crying, if you like laughing at testicles, yes. it's the movie yes. for you. If you like feeling really intensely about the concept of being a trying desperately to force people to remember that you and the group you're a part of are real and existed Oof. and you're okay with crying about that for a while yeah. uh yeah you'll probably like it by the way if you're trans just a heads up but um maybe themes about having to hide what you are to get by and work a job in public or having to decide to leave the areas you're familiar with entirely and choosing between those might hit a little hard to home. Uh, also, up. also, there's like one joke that's like, haha, man in a skirt. That's it. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Pretty brief, but it's certainly in there. Uh, also, heads up for animal death. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. But you should watch it also, it's good. You should! Oh, Gegege no Kitaro. Man, I should have watched that more. That was on public TV in Hawaii. No kidding! Yeah, we had a lot of stuff on public TV. Shinchan was public TV in Hawaii. No fucking kidding. Yeah, I, I still remember, like, the dopey little kid voice. He would be on all the time <laughs> when I got home. It was cute. Good God. I never actually got to see much Crayon Shin-Chan. Oh, uh, we should watch it sometime. You'd like it. We should. I definitely know that I really love the style and some of the animation in it is really dope. Yeah, fucking- Oh god, I've never watched Grave of the Fireflies because thankfully my parents I cannot... actually did- I cannot did do that one. summaries. Yeah. I can't. On that, I, I bet I've heard it's beautiful. I, I know it is. I can't. <laughs> I have an older sister. Yeah. I'm a sibling. Yeah. And also kids. I'm an only child. I just can't. Ugh, kid death gets me. It's o yeah. I it's okay to have limits. I think. <sighs> I'm gonna draw Russell a little chubby. I think that'd be cute on him. When I was a kid, I I distinctly remember like when I I found out about like Hiroshima through that one book. That's like you know the 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 girl that folds the thousand paper cranes. We did that in school. I bawled. Mm -hmm. I bawled so fucking mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> yeah, in in Hawaii, uh, we have to do big long study units on it, mm. and that and on the uh, island tests because they impacted Hawaii too. That makes sense. Uh, we're not going to get into those subjects too much because yep. they're very dark. Yeah. But I'm just remembering it like that was a fun way to find out about stuff. Oh God, yeah. Unexpectedly, but also I'm glad. I, I think you should find out about stuff, some of that stuff when you're a kid, frankly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Otherwise, you just don't worry about it. Oh god, Puzz. It's horrifying. Oh no. Oh. You know what would be cute? I think it'd be cute if Rebels in Half-Life did origami sometimes because it's just like, you gotta have something to do. Yeah. I think a lot about like, way to pass the time with like less access to electronics or at least like less access to entertainment oh that reminds me something i figured out while i was looking at eli um check mm -hmm. it out so back during half-life alex eli's wearing this let's mm -hmm. see if the image copied sorry one sec mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, come on over, JPEG. Okay. <laughs> Eli's wearing this. We see Olga yeah, yeah. wearing this hat, too. We see just about every rebel in Half-Life 2 wearing this hat. He's wearing the rebel uniform hat. That's cute. Yeah. 
I always really like that, honestly. It's yeah. like a small thing, but also like something that you could probably knit yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's that's uh, fucking good. And I also like if it is like a rebel signal, which maybe it's not meant to be, maybe it's just a cheeky nod, but too late. I've decided it is, because you know what's important about it? Is it's something you can take the fuck off and ditch if you need to. Yep. I get Thank you. Oh, cu thank you for the wasp, Cuppy Dog City. Thank uh, you. Every now and then I'll see a media where they're like, and to show that they were part of the rebels, they have a, a red sleeve or a tattoo. And I'm like, uh huh? It's so cool you have way to, to get throw caught. The whole coat off. Yeah. Like, it, I feel like the point of having a marker to show you're a rebel isn't to show defiance to the bad guys and be like, haha, look at how many. It's so that other people know you're safe. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And every now and then, sometimes, you know, you have to duck, as it were. And yes, Doc, Eli got the- Eli looks good in, in- in Alex, honestly. They- they went back to work on his model a bit. It's, and yeah, Nick the Himbo, I- I was. I lived in Hawaii as a kid. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm from North- Northern California, in contrast, but a very rural, rural area. I- I should know- a lot of weed. I'm Howley, though. I'm white. Don't... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, but I'm also not much of anything else. I'm mostly just not white. <laughs> <laughs> I I kid, mostly. But I'm allowed to joke, because I look like every ambiguously ethnic character from a 90s kids show. <laughs> no, Al I love the way Eli looks in Alex. And oh I my just god, love he's so fucking handsome. And you get to see a bit more personality with him. Like, I love how, like, him and Russell are, like, all, like, fucking pumped up from the successful mission. He's like, yeah, it was easy. It's good. We're good, baby. Like, the fucking, like, sir, why are you doing this in person anyway? <laughs> oh, right on, oh, Nick the Himbo. That's cool. I, oh, yeah. I was on Oahu. Uh, I just get to hear Bugs' stories of living in a paradise where there's tiny lizards everywhere. Oh, the geckos. I miss my geckos. And I miss... We had lizards, but not like that. Hawaii... I could not reach under every surface and pull out a handful of tiny friends. The cockroaches in Hawaii were like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so, like, Honolulu was overrun <laughs> with the big flying bastards, right? Yeah, yeah. But... In in the grass, there were these little dudes. They were like the size of nickels. They would just scatter around. They were cute. Yes, I saw. It. Well, uh, okay. So geckos mo mostly didn't do uh, push-ups, but the anoles would do the push-ups. Yeah. Oh, I love that. We'd even get the ones where they do the little frill with their throat. Which I little fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. He hello, ladies. <laughs> ladies, do you hello. see my mini flexes? I'm so buff and strong, ladies. Sir, look at- ma'am, look at my neck inflate, ma'am! Oh yeah, B-52s, yeah. B-52s? Flying cockroaches. Oh! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I didn't get anything that exotic for pests. Uh, instead, I grew up in an area with wild rats! Oh no. Yeah. Here's the thing. Domesticated rats are wonderful. I love rats so goddamn much. And even a lot of species of, like, I'm gonna be honest, city rats are fucking adorable. Yeah. I hear people are like, oh, the New York rat, they'll mug you. And I'm like, that little baby? That little doofy baby who's just fat on pizza and has never had to struggle? The worst kind of rat is a middle of the woods woodpile bramble rat. Oh, man. They speak the hissing voice, and they know that humanity broke the contract. <laughs> they, 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 those, that experience is more akin to, like, hearing fucking with, like, the walls going, We know you're the, the worst. God. God. That's very scary. It's extremely scary, and the worst part is you, you find out that it's happening because suddenly all the mice vanish, so it's like a fucking horror movie. Oh. See, where where my dad lives, I think the scariest things we get, like, you'll have a bear take down a bird feeder. The scariest thing you get is the fucking grouse, the football-sized chicken bird. 
likes to do this funny <laughs> trick where it flies directly into your house, even though every side of your house is covered in wood. <laughs> and when it hits, it feels oh. like a fucking radiator has exploded. Like, the entire house just... <laughs> 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 See, I was worried that you were going to say that they're like those turkeys that decide that humans are hot. Oh no, we, we uh. have a lot of turkeys come through, but they're they're extremely fucking chill turkeys. Uh, which, by the way, side note, sometimes turkeys or other forms of big birds, uh, like emus and ostriches usually, decide that humans are hot. Because humans are shaped more like birds of that type than any other animal, mm -hmm. and our faces change colors, and we have colors top of the head. And turkeys think that red faces are very attractive. <laughs> and sometimes a turkey goes, oh, hello, human." Hey. What do you like my text? Do you like my turkey moves? And that's how you get people trapped in their driveways. <laughs> God. <laughs> All turkeys in Oklahoma oh, no, are very gay snakes. for me. Oh no. <laughs> that's the problem. Is like that's the other thing is this is going to be a hell of a statement to say out loud. Uh -huh. But turkeys don't perceive human gender. <laughs> Good for them. Kinda, but it also means you get like some intro, like, and uh, hi, my name is Elizabeth, and this is my turkey harem. <laughs> the ladies. <laughs> I have to shoot them out of my driveway. God. Uh, also, sometimes turkey toms decide that the turkey that they can see in the reflection of your car is their enemy. That's a worse situation, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some very funny online fixes for it that involve smearing your car window in Vaseline. Which I just think is funny to make someone have to do. Mm -hmm. Do you think Turk? I- I- ch okay. So I've said before that in Half-Life, I choose to believe that North America is still there. Uh -huh. Just there was such an explosion of growth that the Combine just don't want anything to do with it and it suited them well enough to like move everyone in the US to destabilize stuff blah blah blah. Uh. I choose to think that there's definitely still turkeys out there but imagine the fucking horror of like alien growth eating turkeys. I think we're getting some fungal forest half like fucking fallout style situations going on. Honestly? Honestly? That would be very fucking cool. Wouldn't it? Especially like, okay, so instead of the stupid, like, nuke- Oh, everything's a desert. Nothing stays a desert after it's been nuked. We tested nukes in the desert. Places that have been nuked have wildlife and wild growth move in surprisingly fast. And so even if that happened in the US, but I want the overgrown, fucked up natural biome run loose with like weird alien invasive growth. Yeah. Especially since we know that the Zen growth only really takes off when it's dark and temperate enough for it to do so. It won't grow in places with a ton of soil, but that means that forest underbrushes are probably the places you see the most of that, and it also means that prairies are probably the safest places in America. I think it would be I funny if turkey cool. tails grew on the turkey. God. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the don't starve design direction, so I kind of have to support it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Somni Snake said, My grandma had one of their peacocks decide that the reflection peacock was his nemesis and crashed through her truck window. Oh, fuck yeah. At long last, they have defeated Mirror Turkey. Or Mirror Peacock. <laughs> Virginia Cave System Zen Caves? Oh. oh. That would be fucking. Oh, I like that. that. Also, imagine, like, mountains full of wild pigs that have grown off of the calorie density of zen growth because something that i'm very sure of is that zen well i should say vortal growth because i still think it's from the vortigaunt home planet zen not much is from zen mm. but i'm convinced it's very calorie dense because of like the ambient energy and the way stuff grows seems to be based around like eating a lot of shit uh so I think you'd get very big hogs, and I think even if they're not actually mutated, very big hogs are very big scary. Speaking yes. Speaking of Mononoke. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and Sarah Murphy, don't trust caves. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Simply don't. don't. Simply don't. Uh, I mean, like, you can go a ways into a cave, and if a cave has, like, wooden bridges and tour guides, I could be convinced, but otherwise... See, the uh, Zen fungal growths would be used to attract mates because they would make up bright colors. Uh, so it would be right. beneficial for the turkey to let it grow in their tail. Sure, and when the turkey eventually bites it, then the Zen growth can take over because, uh, as I've often said, I often believe that a lot of Zen growth is functionally like autonomous forms of cancer as amoeba slash plant. Mm hmm. Uh, I have theories about that. I'll get back out the fucking blackboard one of these nights. But you'd also- okay, but imagine that, because you'd get funny bushes of the result after they die that look like a big turkey tail. Oh, that'd be cute. <laughs> Canned turkeys. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Creatures. Sometimes you gotta have creatures. No, I don't trust caves. Because the Magnus Files did an episode that involved someone talking about caving. And I'll be honest, regular cave exploring scares me. Even before it got to the spooky stuff. Like, anything where they're like, and then you dive for 20 feet. And I'm like, no. No. No, you don't do that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> we need to play that Jack's Box game where the other players make the presentation and then the player has to present it and sell the others on it. Yes, we fucking do. That would be fun. Uh, that would be very fun. I'm going to confidently say that I'd be very good at it. <laughs> I'm, I just say things. I just I'm say still... things. I don't know. I still fucking, I fucking love that one video of Balp with his not being able to see ghost glasses. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, I don't think I'll be better than that. I'll no, say that. No, no, but that would be fun sometime. Yeah. The only good caves are ones I can walk in and maybe have to duck. I do not want to crawl. If I have to crawl, I will die. Exactly! Yeah, yeah. Exactly, that's, that's the upsetting part. You know, I... I I bet every now and then you gotta check on Russell just to make sure he's like sleeping. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like if you if you call him multiple times and he doesn't answer, it's always tempting to be like, well, maybe he's not answering because he's sleeping. No, he's not answering because he's hyper focusing. <laughs> Russell has not slept in three days. He is living off of the Sunkiss type soda they have. It's fine. Oh, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No, it's, it's okay. He's just he just got really interested in the wiring systems that the combine use and how you could maybe reuse that to oh you can see how it's oh, mm, mm. It's just, you have to kinda keep him talking until you can get him like onto a horizontal surface. God. And there's lots of are you trying to trick me onto a bed? No. 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 No, listen, we just need to check. I I the... hear better when I'm sitting on a soft surface. <laughs> Russell's like, that doesn't make sense. I think that makes sense. I heard of that. I heard of that. <laughs> uh, or in very dire situations, you have to, like, get a blanket or a... You have to, like, tie his jacket around. You do have to, like, a burrito kind of situ God. situation. You gotta, like, immobilize him long enough for him to realize he's tired. <laughs> Oh, what's this, Adrian? Oh, dear. Thank you, Adrian. Very cool. Very cool, Adrian. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. Thank yeah. you, beloved moderator, Adrian. Yes, thank you, dear, dear mod with power in this chat. <laughs> <laughs> A it's the sassy pose that kills me, I think. Yeah. Zen Megaphone in the California Redwood Forest. Oh, you're talking my language. 
the redwood the california redwood forest is in fact one of the places that more than likely zen growth aka vortal growth would flourish in because typically in the middle of a redwood forest not that much sunlight filters down to the bottom and the pacific northwest weather system with um recent it's a little bit worse now don't worry is usually very cold and temperate sources that's where i grew up <laughs> And side note, the area has wild hogs already. Oh. And mountain lions. Oh. Fun area. Do not know how I survived a childhood of wandering around the mountain. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I've never broken a bone. Very cool. Very cool. Just ambled up and around places. Somehow I didn't get lost. I don't know. These stories, by all rights, should involve the words, and then rescue services showed up, but here we are. <laughs> but god, yeah, no, the, the zen- the, the fucking megaflora would get interesting. Oh, is this the Barney please don't kill me? No. I'm not even with the science team. From, uh, Opposing Force. I don't want to die. <laughs> they are not paying him enough for his voice acting. <laughs> Barney Calhoun definitely doesn't want to die. His boyfriend just went missing. It's fine. He's good, actually. I don't... He just grabs the gun and, like, slowly... <laughs> I don't... What you gonna... You better make it hurt. Better do Get it in one, one shot. shot. You think you can do it, big man? You think you can hit me? I don't know, you look kind of fat fingered. I don't know. I bet they don't even teach you aiming in the military school. <laughs> Adrian, just, just to having a day. Oh, you're, you're a fellow woods wanderer, Somni Snake. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you're just a weird semi feral child, and it's not really anyone's fault exactly. I'm gonna circle around to this one with a less chunky brush, I think. Mm. Yeah, I could Yeah, I could see it. Good mattress though. Oh thanks. I think people should live in the science centers where they teach you about science. Somebody out there in the Half-Life universe is camping underneath the statue of a whale. Yeah. And probably. his name is Larry. <laughs> God. Larry cracks me up because he's definitely a character who exists because there is no way to, to like, explain what they were about to do to you without you either dying multiple times or just having a character explain it to you. Ew. And I'm glad that for once, for once, Half-Life decided to go with, well, let's just have a character explain it to you then, instead of, good fucking luck! Good luck! You're going to die. Instead of... Here's some striders. You figure it out. Good fucking luck. The rebels are just going to keep fucking dying. It's your fault. They're just Uh-huh. You and you're going to see this like 5 times, so you're just deaf. You're going to get worn completely out of seeing them die. <laughs> Larry is like if Bengus was a person. Go to what bed. What does that mean? Go to bed. He's not bald. He's been awake too long. <laughs> He's really not. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think this is maybe we are just too old for chat's jokes. You are four years, like, <laughs> whatever fucking years younger than me. <laughs> I'm thirty. <laughs> I'm twenty-seven. I'm older than them, probably. You're Twelve. No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> mean to me. No, it's just the don't starve bit always gets stuck in my bed. I'm like 10 years old. Oh, yeah. I'm eight. It's... Yeah, that kid with a smile from me cracks me up. <laughs> Adrian. What? No. Vote. <laughs> I got points. 
I don't understand. See how, let's, let's what see is how that fast mean? they'll let me vote. Hold on. Hold on, I can fix this. This You gave me too much time for this. This is I Lair. got so many channel points. I like Lair, he's my friend. We Lair's throw beer good. bottles at zombies together. I like the way he reacts, uh if you if you actually manage to kill fucking Jeffrey. Oh yeah. That's very cute. It's like, whoa. Oh. Alright. Wow. You motherfuckers are trying to overpower my channel points voting, <laughs> but it's not gonna work. <laughs> I have forty one fucking K, strap in. <laughs> <laughs> There's a quiet bidding war going on over here. Oh, can I- am I allowed to vote with points? No. I don't- no, no, I don't think you're allowed to vote at all. Report poll! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's something you can do, because like any mod can just set one of these up. Oh god, one of you motherfuckers got started. I can- 202, huh? From our 62 audience. <laughs> our numbers are amazing. Wow, best stream ever. <laughs> it has, it has, despite everything, been a pretty great stream it has after the beginning. Fucking, I, uh, I literally cried from stress, and it's I fine. Uh, uh, which thank you all for sticking with us. Yes. By the way, that's anyone who made it this far. Yes, fucking champions. thank you, thank you. Uh, I was just sitting there trying to fix it going nightmare nightmare it's true <laughs> thank you Adrian <laughs> male wife god uh... yeah twitch has just been rough recently like every stream I've watched for like the last week has had like some kind of weird like struggling with OBS mm -hmm. or the sound mm -hmm. or like this this twit the stream suddenly like dumping in the middle. I want I don't know what's up. Bezos is mad at mm -hmm. me personally. It's so fucked up. Twitch has been strangled, it's true. <laughs> Adrian, hooray! Yay! Watch Adrian's streams, by the way. I, I okay. I always feel bad that I never managed to retweet promo tweets and tweets inside. But you have to understand, I actually read through Twitter in chronological order, and I'm <gasps> almost always eight hours behind. Oh no, Frankie! What's it wrong is, with you? It's literally impossible for me to see people like streaming tweets on time. I like seeing stuff in order. Huh. It's better. It's good. Uh, is it? How I live. <laughs> I see fleets at the top of my feed, and they're not very uh -huh. useful, actually. And mm, I don't. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jester. Right? That's incredibly kind. Well, thank you. Seriously. So someday, the the visual list stream that's just gonna have like a JPEG of a cat or something. Yeah, Adrian, you're a mod. You're welcome to put uh, Discord yeah, announcements please. in, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, by default, just displays stuff most recent first, and then just kind of does 51 card pickup with whatever's left, mm -hmm. so... Who just voted? Motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm holding out for a Frankie and Bugs podcast. If either of us had any idea how to record, edit, and host one, instead you get this. This but is honestly, a podcast, practically. This is kind of the podcast. <laughs> You are fighting our viewers actively. I don't think On they'd this. encourage- I don't think when Twitch says how to get views, I don't think this is part <laughs> of the thing they encourage. Explain Germa! Explain Germa! Uh, he sounds like Scout and Dang looks it. like Scout. <laughs> I'm gonna take a cap of this poll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, I guess you have to now, huh? <laughs> I mean, I can't lie, y'all put the points into Bingus, it's hard to deny. <laughs> oh, God. This is my friend. He helps me throw bottles at zombies. He does. He's my friend. He's normal. Thank you, Fandom Hall. This is why you unionize your right catboy disaster. <laughs> Chat has unionized. <laughs> <sighs> Terrifying thought. <laughs> I, I want to do some cooldown doodling. Yeah, I think it's about time. It's two. It's twelve seventeen. I have saved uh, the piece. We had kind of a rough start. We sure fucking did, didn't we? We sure fucking <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think a bug gets to draw whatever they want now. Yay! Uh, I took a break. Bugs kind of didn't. Bugs is gonna power through and take a break after. If no. Bugs, if Bugs stops now, Bugs may not be able to pick back up. How about That's that? That's fair, <laughs> but also makes me think maybe we should just wrap. Oh wait, no, I want to doodle. Okay, okay, okay. Bugs do doodle. Bugs do doodle. Tr listen, y'all trust me. I cannot stress enough that part of why we even do this stream is that we're both just workaholics and y'all keep us honest. Yeah. Bugs have a sip is what seems to be the chat's decision. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> we should make- we should steal a, an idea from dear friend of the channel, please follow Bugs- I mean, sorry, Puzz! Follow Puzz! Mm -hmm. uh, we should have there be like a points thing that's like bugs take a drink, but it's gotta be it's set at like five thousand. It's set at like five k. <laughs> have to save up for that bad boy. I had my sip. We had sip, and I have little sips in the background constantly. Oh, good. Uh, it's not subliminal messaging. I just got a stutter. <laughs> <laughs> What's this well, about it's commission like bugs? Well, overall mush mouth. Oh. Hmm? I saw oh, the yeah, words commission bugs, bugs and my brain lit up in terror and excitement. God. It's a good response, though. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, one day, honestly, we will have, like, only the, the dream of, of only stream commissions. Someday, someday. What? No, I want to stream video games. No, I mean, your only commissions will be done once done on stream. Oh, be. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did that. We like doing the video game. I was like, Frankie, my wrist isn't gonna hold up for that. Oh, you die. <laughs> Bad enough that you play Splatoon. <laughs> I haven't played Splatoon in a long time, man. No, yeah. But Splatoon 3, we are all just oh. gonna invest in wrist brace. Yeah. Get me that ibuprofen. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. It's. it's. God, I. Every now and then I remember that Splatoon 3 was, like, announced, and I get, like, thrilled about it. Mm-hmm. Commission of Full Page of Magnus in, too! Listen! 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 We like Listen. the man. Like the man. Also, I can make up weird shit about what he did when he was young, too. Yeah. Honestly, I- if you want to commission me for a character I've done before, I do not care as long as uh, I'm happy. Yeah, no. So long as it's a character that we like, that we like to talk about, that we have stuff we can talk about, that we'll be, like, enthused about, but we're still doing Half-Life. It's been a straight year. It sure has. Oh, Virtual Pets, I'm glad to hear that. Yo, excellent, excellent. We're probably going to pick back up um, soonish with Dragon Quest Builders, too. Yeah. Uh, we mostly just took a break this week to try and do our Tuesday thing, which wound up being No More Heroes, which worked out, weirdly enough. Yeah, we might be doing- we might wrap up No More Heroes soon, I think. Yeah, I'd like to do that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we- we- I- I'd like to see the rest of it, and we still have our- our plans- our plans and finagling, because No More Heroes 3 has Alien Boy, who seems mean, so... He seems so mean, haha. <laughs> I'm just twirling my hair a little. And maybe we will fight him as the final boss? Maybe? Maybe, like, there'll be rivalry? 
Hi. Hi. Sir? Oh, you seem so mean. Travis in the closet. Help. Please. Just, oh God, he, honey, you just get. Can, has someone ever said the word bisexual around Travis Touchdown? Adrian, <laughs> over. here's the thing: if you give me a list of prompts, uh -huh. I will make it happen. Do not yeah, doubt like me. Do not, do not doubt, doubt me. Power. I I do want to see more of the best. Here's the thing: I, bastard boys are good because we have one in Dragon Quest Builders too, and in No More Heroes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said Puzz's activation phrase. Oh god. Oh god. Tandem Hop says, tell us about the Magnuson game along the lines of Barney's game and Adrian's game, aka tell us about Magnuson's spin-off game. <sighs> mm-hmm. It's a puzzle game. What? Is it? No? Yes. Maybe. I'm gonna say right off the bat that I think it's funniest if he gets the game where you don't actually have weapons. Uh huh. But if you do have fighting in it, I'm going to say that it runs more like uh, Dead Rising, where you have to like pick up weapons from what's around you. You don't start with a gun or anything, but also you can suplex people. Oh fuck yeah! Because as we all know, Magnuson can definitely canonically suplex someone. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, we all remember that part, and I think his game would definitely involve, like, it's, uh, you know, maybe I would compare a little bit to Eco because it has that same thing of, like, you know, you meet the NPC that you are technically, like, escorting the whole game, mm -hmm. but their AI, like, helps you with some of the puzzles, and you can't talk directly to them. Mm -hmm. You can kind of indicate what you need to be done, and that's him uh, meeting Uriah, and at first, like, you actually have to kind of, like, physically carry him for a bit. But he lends you, like, a ranged kind of telekinesis and attack thing because he's got a broken collar. Mm -hmm. uh, admittedly, you do have to push around a lot of crates. Mm. Uh, it's a little bit like, you remember how some of the puzzles in Wind Waker were? Where, like, yeah, you got, like, the extra weapons and, like, this and that. But uh, at the end of the day, time to push around some boxes and crates and large stone blocks. Which... Uh, the best part of Wind Waker is definitely when you find out that the Master Sword has been sealed by a large triangle pushing block puzzle. <laughs> well, listen, is it's Wind Waker what... a Sokoban? I don't know what a Sokoban is. You know, it was the limitation of the engine at the time. Of course, Magnuson had to kind of focus on pushing those blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the the... You can't do it at the same time as there's combat in the room. Yeah. Uh, basically, like, it's kind of a slower game. You don't get through, like, the main amount of combat. Uh, I'm going to say that Magnuson's part of the game might even happen after, like, kind of, a like, some of it's... Oh, man, you know what would actually be pretty cool, though? Hmm. Uh is if, like, as you play the game, you eventually get to the point where Gordon Freeman has killed the Nihilant, mm -hmm. and suddenly, like, Uriah perks up a bit more and is able to do more as an AI and is mm. able to communicate a little bit. That'd be cute. Because he has access to the hive mind again. It's a 3D first-person block me game? Good lord. Uh, Wind Waker isn't a crate puzzle game, but it has one island that is. Yeah. So... I listen. I'm that one person. I liked finding all the Triforce pieces. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was, it fun, was fun too. It was fun. It was a good excuse to like after you've learned the whole shape of the map, and suddenly all the islands where you had no fucking idea what they were there for, you could go back and you could get the thing and you could shoot that stupid bird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only ever finished Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass and Breath of the Wild because those are the Zelda games I like and they're kind of a different Zelda game than any other Zelda game. Hey, one more than me, man. True, true. It's good, it's good. Uh, Travis Touchdown also definitely has Zelda opinions, but they're never quite what you think. Mm, he really likes Tingle. Uh, he thinks they should still have pink hair. Yes. 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 I don't know. I thought it was kind of better when the gender was kind of ambiguous. I always felt really strongly about that as a kid. No idea why, though. <laughs> oh, 
also, the Queen Fairy was totally hot. I, yeah, that's... But also, uh, so, you know, at the part where you find out that actually it was Princess Zelda, I always got really <laughs> emotional because of the... It's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I was talking to Bugs about this. I feel like Travis touched down, like, he's just not social. But the problem is, if he was, he's hot enough that he'd probably be fine. Mm -hmm. Like, there, he's hot enough that there are girls who will listen to him talk about his animes. <laughs> I, I just don't think he's ever, like, been able to stay in a social situation long enough to make it happen. Yeah, we were joking about, like, you know, I like to go to the bars and I get the free drink and... The, the dude who runs the, the fucking porno VHS place is like the, the free drink, Travis? You know, whenever you go to a bar, you get this free drink, and they're always like, hey, it's, it seems like a weird business model, right? And it's like, oh, he doesn't he doesn't know people are sending him free drinks, huh? He doesn't... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've never played Twilight Princess. I've heard nice things about it, though. You uh, know, I haven't I've, either. I've... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sheik did things to your brain? Probably. Yeah. I hope Twilight Princess gets ported to the Switch. I want to play it real bad. Yeah. I'd really love, like, the whole Zelda library on the Switch, honestly. Yeah, that'd be cool. Twilight Princess stream request incoming. Listen, <laughs> wait for it to get ported first, okay? Yeah. If it gets on the Switch, but we only can fuck around with emulators so much. Mm-hmm. Because they're complicated. They're complicated and they everyone, scare me. Everyone who gets stuck listening to Travis speak is the Walter White Jesse what the fuck are you talking about meme. <laughs> I, yeah, a little bit of that. Just a little, little, little bit, of bit of that. You see, then Gooseberry pulled out her power sword, which actually was and, a symbolic... Yeah? See, that's how you can tell that that is truly when she finally managed to accept her father's divorce and getting remarried because it's the motif from this dress that her stepmother got her, and I, honestly, every time it gets me. God. I feel like Travis is that guy where, like, if he was just horny about anime, it would make more sense to you, but he's not really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's weirder than that. Somehow. Somehow. I see. To me, I really liked Madoka, but the whole thing of everyone after that wanting to do edgy magical girl retakes did not understand the point of the anime. It's like, oh god, oh god, oh god, he's gone to Madoka. <laughs> Escape strategy. If you guys play the Skyward Sword port, you can hold the weird cat. The weird cat. What's that mean? The weird cat. Uh. Also, side note: I'm the one sole Phantom Hourglass defender. But also, I can tell in retrospect, that's partially because it had Ocean Iyami. <laughs> it's just... it's just ship Iyami. It's cute and a strange, weird creature. Ooh! Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that sound cute. Yeah, I want to replay uh, Wind Waker on the Switch too, though. It, cozy. Yeah. Cozy, man. Fucking cozy in bed yeah. game. No, like, that's part of what I love about Breath of the Wild is that, like, I've, the run I've been doing, I've mentioned before, I've been doing, like, I, I teleport a little bit, like, I'm allowed to teleport to Hitino to, like, dye a new outfit if I want to, mm -hmm. but otherwise I'm trying to travel, like, by horse and by road. Side note, I found out I'm a dumbass and I didn't know which road goes to the Goron City. At all. Oh. Completely off base. It is not the one that you think it is if you're looking at the map and you don't have all the towers yet. Uh. You take a left in the middle of going north above the Zora area. It's, it's actually a very easy to miss road, but just like the moving around where like it's kind of slow, but it takes its own time and you got to like pay attention a little bit to what's going on and you can just kind of zone out. Got the horse and the music. To me, it's very much the same mental space it's like, oh, I'm on the ocean and I am I am skipping along, and I got the wind at my back, and oh Jesus Christ, those big helicopter things! Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> do you do you remember the fucking music those enemies make? Oh the fucking, God! Like, yeah. Terrors and just wood, 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 wood. I do oh, not God. like those oh, fucking God. dudes. I don't like them. They're so giant too. Mm -hmm. They're so big. 
And, like, if you get knocked out of the boat, they, like, hover around. Oh, it's the worst. Uh, people don't like Phantom Hourglass because they find returning to the central temple over and over again, like, repetitive, which, fair enough. But to me, I always liked it because every time you'd, like, get through it a little bit faster and you'd have, like, a new tool so you could finally get the stuff and it felt very satisfying. Mm. I, I think it helped if you were actually a child and you played it to some degree. <laughs> This... I, I think being a teenager whose special focus did help a bit. Uh, and I believe Bugs is currently drawing a big comfy couch. Yep. Wow. Yes. Yep. Yep. This was a doodle from when we were talking about it on stream earlier. I figured I'd finish it out. Yes. We're talking about clowns and uh, I, I was saying earlier I think that this is really one of the best like semi-modern representations of clowns that to me is very peak. It's, it's just right. Uh, although... <clears throat> I do think Lazy Town is a commedia dell'arte for children. Yep. And uh, Sporticus is functionally the Arlecchino of the story. He is the hyper-competent, but has to do things on others' behalf, a uh, semi-comedic slapstick character. There's your take for the night. <laughs> uh, also, Robbie Rotten did... In retrospect, I'm like, hmm, teen me sure was really obsessed with this, like, really mask but kind of femmy character design. Mm. Uh, with a pompadour. What could that mean? How strange. Mm. <laughs> we are number one. <laughs> See, in my day, the meme was, we, you are a pirate. Oh, yeah, I remember getting banned from gimmick AQs once. Uh... <laughs> And when I sent in my mod appeal, they sent me that instead. Because <laughs> I went to a press thing! Aww. They thought I stole the movie! Mean to me. Aww. Yeah. I was so sad. I was like, I've had that account for one year, I'm never gonna get all my karma back! <laughs> oh, the time scale when you are a baby. Yeah. <sighs> I, to this day, I will always have the fucking... Yar har fiddle dee dee. Being, Being a pirate, pirate is hard as me. Do, do what you want. want a pirate is free. free. You are a you pirate. You are a pirate. You are a pirate. Get the fucking rap breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> the best. It is. That's the good shit. That's what I was blasting on my fucking like generation three iPod, waiting for theater class. Oh yeah, Ryan put that in the kerfuffle, that's right! Oh or Chango God, Show put that right. in the kerfuffle, fuck. God, those mixes uh, are so fucking good. I, I gotta re-listen to the season finale remixes. That was fucking, oh, godlike, man. Nobody handles a hype through weird music mix-up quite like the man do, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, um, Jesus. hang on, let me actually, you guys should check this out. Which, not Twitter. Com. Uh, Shango Show. CPU Kerfuffle is Smash. It is Super Smash Bros. Fighting, but it's also like a fighting tournament a la Blaseball, where all of the characters and their lore is kind of made up by fans, but it turns the random number generation of the matches into like a filled out story that he narrates and also, uh, Holly Holly Tones comes on to narrate, and some other great people who do, like, I, I I really love when someone is on who knows how to narrate, like, Smash matches. Oh yeah, it's great. Because I don't <clears throat> understand anything in the game, but I like, I have this thing where I like listening to fighting game narration in a very, I like your funny words, magic man, kind of way. I think I just have a mechanical keyboard, Sarah Murphy. Yeah, it's clacky clacky. Yeah. Uh. Listen, we're trying- the mic no longer picks up every audible sound in the room. <laughs> yeah, it, for that it is a miracle. It stopped picking up the mm -hmm. shrimp waterfall noises. Mm -hmm. Which may be because I have to jam a, a net under the waterfall pre-stream, but that's mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. The shrimps will be- the shrimps live. They're fine. They're yeah. good. Uh, they're- I always think of the one that crawled up on top of the water filter. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? That one was a stunt shrimp. God, really. I really do like it. Clung to my hand just long enough to touch water and then was like, bye. 
<clears throat> they had a visitation from the gods. Yeah, yeah, no other shrimp is gonna believe it. Fucking the other side of... It, the fucking other side of an HP Lovecraft story. <laughs> Mad Rat? I Never don't know. Never heard of it. We do love a stunt shrimp. <laughs> uh, Russell, by the way, I decided at some point would probably try to fabricate a like special tank for brine shrimp that's full of like weird little futuristic Jetsons buildings and he's like listen when I was a kid I always read the stupid American comic books with all the stupid little oh look you'll have the little the brine shrimp the oh the sea monkey so I'm oh, doing God, it for myself yeah Christ and it's just like oh that's cute you're just making the tank right you're not putting anything in the water right Russell it's... right Russell just stays quiet as he continues 3D printing the little Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Changa showed us a lot of fun stuff, and the remixes are fucking tight. Yeah. There's a special remix that preempts, like, every fucking CP it's for It's such fossil. a fucking smart way to get your chat rules across, too, I gotta say. Yeah, yeah, because they go across, like, while the music is playing and while the hype gets going. Yeah. And it really does, like, roll you directly into the right energy for it. And it's like, ignore these fucking rules, motherfucker. Look at the show. You cannot yes, ignore which... a mix this good. Mm -hmm. Also, sorry if that sound came through. I just bonked my mic with my elbow. It's okay. Fun. Yeah. She's, oh I, yeah, no, I, cat, the match, the mashups. I do not know what Jean is talking about here. Please fill in if with your own head. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she's like, she is talking about the difficulty of getting like paint to adhere to the hev suits because she's panicking because she's gay. Agree. I I feel like she's she's that really unfortunate person where if like she doesn't know what to talk about, she just starts talking about work. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of times it's very like, oh god, oh god, oh god, she's definitely not a- you are in a gay bar. Pull it together! So, but what do you know about quantum once. teleportation? Just, just curious. Uh, it worked out. Have you ever thought- needed... have you ever thought <laughs> about what if my, my work zone could be even safer? Say, what if your job exploded into radiation? Have you ever thought about how you would handle that? Well, I spend a lot of time Luck thinking about that. Luckily it works for Colette, but that's also because she's like, you're cute. This is, Colette's like, I do think about that. I think it would be pretty cool. God. Anyway, so that's how Mythbusters discovered a new explosive and the episode could never be aired? God. God. Yeah, she does watch a lot of Mythbusters, though. Yeah. Colette, me, you know, I watch this an episode and it's like, where do they get all these dead pigs from? Can I get a dead pig? <laughs> I'm telling Breen we need a dead pig for something. Yeah, it's very important. We have to test uh, velocity on uh, the suits. Yep. Side note, when's Breen's leaving his office and how much concrete can we get? <laughs> I want to do some independent research. <laughs> I think we all had, like, weird periods of just fugue watching the Mythbusters as teenagers. Oh, for sure! Fucking Good great fucking goddamn time. show. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll always be very fond of it, although I will always resent that programming of that show looped, like, the same five episodes on cable. Yep. So you'd be, like, muttering along, like, and so Jimmy Hoffa was very... <laughs> and then you braid together the hair, and... God. Damn, I love this brush. Mm -hmm. It looks good, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it, it blends. It's a sketch brush that's also a painting brush, so I can just go from one to the other without worrying too much about it, which is good for my oh, lazy okay. ass. I love when that happens. Oh, yeah, like, sometimes switching brushes, like, kind of interrupts the flow a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Which, if I were a real real strategic person about this, I'd be only changing sizes by using the buttons, but that's okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Mythbusters made you interested in pyrotechnics? That sounds right. Hell yeah. I found myself- I, I remember- like, I definitely remember watching a lot of it, but I was always just very charmed by their unfortunate crash test dummy. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was Buster. cute. Poor Buster. Alas, poor Buster. <laughs> oh wait, has- hmm? Hmm. Did the Animal Crossing relaxing music- it did! Oh Animal no, we ran out! Animal Crossing music to calm you down stopped? I'm so sad. Uh, it's back. Oh, it's, it's okay. Back. It's okay. You can uh, stop being enraged. The Animal Crossing music to calm you down is here. Don't worry. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully in next stream, whatever the fuck OBS is doing will stop and folks yeah. will be able to hear music. Yeah, that would be nice. I'm, I'm going to immediately, like, tomorrow. Not tonight, because I'm going mm -hmm. to freak out if I have to fix it tonight, but... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as soon as I'm mentally um, fortitude ish <laughs> to do we, it, we got time. We got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, which by the way, if, if there's anyone still left in chat who's a little bit new to the area, we stream on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, which is part of why I'm like, we got time. Yeah. Because we don't stream until Sunday. And Balan happens when we are ready to do Balan. So, mm -hmm. uh, Balan did this to us. He did this. I mean, everything still worked the last time we did Balan. So. He did this. He did this. It was because we made fun of his chest level. Why is the cheetah there? Because he's cheetah in the, the chest, no, bro. No, he's not. No, he's not. The explicit lesson of his story is that he just, like, lost to a different opponent. Who, by the way, they never, like, follow up on in any way. It's just, like... Yeah, you did lose, but that's okay. You can foster a love of chess by teaching tiny blonde doppelganger of the dude who beat you at chess? Question mark? I really wish they hadn't made that kid he starts teeth. Why didn't the kid look like him? Why know. isn't it like, and here's a little kid who's also brown and kind of like nerdy and skin, then you pass it on and... You see, the most important is that not all white people are going to beat you at chess. You will live. Don't worry. God. Uh, just. I. I appreciate that Balin tries to have, like, some racial representation. I wish they'd had someone in the room aware of problems. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like when you run- I don't know, I don't know. Uh-huh. But also why the cheetah costume, because I get that it's fast in this, but... Maybe you could've- Like, how is there a chess level and they only have one chess-based costume and you're literally just shoved into a chess piece that has guns? <laughs> well. Well. Uh-huh. Well. Uh-huh. I don't know. <sighs> So, yeah, Balin needed someone in the room. But already, I think, literally, like, a QA tester was like, Hey, about this one costume. Yeah. I, I on, on almost no proof, I, I think, like, I literally think the quality assurance testers are probably the reason why the game's playable. Mm -hmm. I, like, that's always true. That's literally always true, admittedly. But I think in Balin specifically... There's been some areas where I'm like, okay, there's a special little step here so that you can get through if you don't have a costume that jumps. A QA tester died for that little step. I think chess with guns should be a game. I think you're right. I think so too. Is there anything else on this board outside of my dew drops? Oh, uh, no. It? Okay. Everyone, look again at my amazing dewdrops. Wow. You should look at the dewdrops because wow. they're extremely lovely and put wow. together very well. Wow. Look at how fucking good those dewdrops are. Look at how nice wow. they are. Wow. They're extremely wow. well rendered and you're showing an increasing grasp wow. of the concepts of color palette and softness used to render the completeness of a shape. Well, everyone. <laughs> It has been a goddamn stream. Let's yeah. look at fan art real quick. 
thank you all again for being here. I'm gonna get soppy at the very end of the stream, but it was one. It was uh, one. And I also wish the chess man made sense, Fish Skipper. <laughs> I'm going to stop sending you Animal Crossing music to calm you two, okay? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> So we should probably, yeah, 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 yeah. First of all, holy shit, Cuppy Dog City. Holy shit, Cuppy Dog City. Bug plush chat, and real. But real. Fucking chat creature. Yeah, fucking chat, but real. Fucking incredible. I, yeah. This is so fucking cute. Look at even the happy it's little so eyes. Cute. They're That's having great. a nice time. <laughs> Cause oh, they're out on the quest. They are here to steal jams. Thank you so much. Freedom. <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> this fucking made my day cause. Uh, Cuppy Dog City, I'm Genuinely. sorry. Thank you, Cuppy Dog City. Killer Lesbian. Now this chat. is what I was laughing at. Tell the truth now about chat. the audio. Tell the truth about the audio. Shakes violently. <laughs> <laughs> Killer Lesbian. <laughs> it's the Stim Cube. <laughs> I don't know if they're being stimmed. I'm being stimmed. Bubbly drew this. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, while they're away. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Frankie. Oh, God. The hand. The hand. That's what That's you have. That's really good. That's great. I love that a lot. Sarah Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Alex. Oh, good. God. I love Kleiner oh. just frowning. The kitty oh. face is very good. Om nom nom. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah Murphy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just to say real quick, Bubbly, that piece fucking kills me. The feral pose is yeah, really good. Yeah, honestly, extremely with the claws out. That's oh. great. Oh, Leon! Leon the cowboy! Oh, Leon, this is great! <laughs> oh, hey, I yeah. love that. Tell him, Frank. <laughs> There's some other energy whenever Blaze Ball comes up. <laughs> this is great. I love how you did the pump. This is cute. Yeah! Super Thank you, cute. Leo. Thank you. Fuck. Bubbly. Oh, bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. You're looking pretty good. Oh, oh fish. Oh, fish. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> that is kind of the feeling, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. Haunted. Thank you, guys. Haunted. Haunted Thank by you. villainry. Haunted by brick villainry. Oh, God. Hang on. Oh, Whoa, God, what's we'll let, doing? Jesus. We'll let you know. <laughs> In a year. In a year. For my next birthday. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to go somewhere special that I found? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's send folks. Hey, if you're afraid of shrimps, don't go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoy shrimps, okay? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, despite everything, tonight really did wind up being a fun fucking night, and that's thanks to viewers like you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for any of the subs. Thank you for following. Thank you for just being here. Thank you if you stayed on from the raid. Thank you if you're watching the VOD. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Even, Even you, Adrian. Thank you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Oh! <gasps>